And welcome back to the Basel Bream Boombox, coming again live from a virtual studio with my very special guest, uh, Jeff Finnan, a.k.a. King Joffrey, is what I came up with. <laughs> because I'd actually been calling you, uh, I, was, I was telling, I don't know who I was telling, but I was like, oh, I have this lad, uh, Joff, uh, on my podcast. And, uh, but you're Jeff. It's actually Jeff, isn't it? It's Jeff. Nobody gets my it's... bleeding name right. So it's Nobody Jeff. gets it. It's your own fault. You're spelled it with, like fucking Joffrey. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. So, yeah. No, I'm you're great. I'm so telling that. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? I actually thought, because um, Basil is, is my own creation. So I thought Jeff, Joff, it's like, um, it was like a more poetic form of Jeff. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, actually, the the poet Jeff is is my own creation as such. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think, um, like I was listening to some of your podcasts in the, in the past, and and I think you like you use that whole Basil Breen as a as a mm. mask as such, as yes. your performance mask, where you a can go on or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and that was just what I did with the poet, you know, that it was like, because it's hard to get up on stage, you know. Oh, and yeah. It, especially at the beginning. And, and I think with, like, um, some of the stuff that I talk about, like, you don't always want it. To, well, I, I don't know. It's very hard when you're on stage just talking about, like, social issues or, or stuff that's really difficult in your life. But so mm. then I, I thought it was much easier just to have this, this mask as the poet there. Yeah, so. Interesting. It's more... It, there's like a little bit of separation in a way. Uh, I think Emmett described this as um, it's a more, and I like this because it's a more. He described his his way of putting the mask, or whatever, as a more turned up version of himself in a way. Like it's like the parts that he wanted to amplify, he was able to turn up a little bit on stage or something. Yeah, like I, I. I think it just gave me something to hide behind, you know, like, mm. I, um, I don't know if I'm that, like, because I'm not, like, I'm, I don't know, I'm not as amped up as Emmett, you know, like, I think he's yeah, his yeah. own, he's, like, he's, he's, he's brilliant, and I think, well, like, when we're, when we're, you know, collaborating and working together, we kind of complement each other very, very well in that, mm. so, but I think it just gave me, um, yeah, just, just something to hide behind when I, when yes. I started off first, like it took me years to build up the the courage to get on stage. You know, like I was writing yeah. for an awful long time, but that 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 kind of I suppose you could call it social anxiety or whatever, just to um, to actually take yes. those first steps onto the stage. Like it's it's a tough place to be because you're completely stripped down, you know, um, uh, and you're very very vulnerable. So yeah. So, so let's 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 rewind the clock a little Sorry. bit now because we're yeah. jumping the gun a bit on my usual uh, usual spiel but we have to go back to the to the origin story that you're alluding to so how how did you come to be the poet jeff or joff i'm saying it's jeff isn't it just tell me king now jeff. it's jeff yeah king king, king joffrey as well <laughs> you, know I mean? actually, you made it easy for me yeah i actually i was in a, a friend before, just before I go into the origin story, a friend uh, sent me a picture. I'm in the uh, Museum of Modern Art at the moment for a, a, a project I did with, with an artist, Sarah, uh, Sarah Price. And uh, he, he sent me a, like a screenshot. He's like, what the hell are you doing in Emmet? I was like, what the hell am I doing in Emmet? But again, they uh, spelled my name incorrectly. So I'm J-E-F-F. So I've been on like posters and gigs and festivals and they either put Jeff the Poet, the poet, I got, I, I got like the poet raffle. I've got like, I've, oh. I've, I've got an, I, I've got an IMDb credit that's wrong. I've got like, you have an song, IMDb yeah. credit. Yeah, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a, you are, it's like, like, your bio is insane, but we'll get into loads of that as well. But the, I just have to yeah. take note of that. Uh, I don't know. I'm taking notes on my laptop and I have a pen and paper. I need to get to the pen and paper. But you go ahead so, there. Um, IMDb. Oh man, that's so legendary. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, but the origin story, like I've been writing, I've been writing since I was a kid. You know, I think, um, I, like I grew up in in inner city, you know, working class Dublin, and it's something that I'm I really really proud of. Like I'm really proud of where I come from, um, and I'm really cr proud that I'm working class. Um, even though I have health insurance at the moment, which is tipping towards middle class, I'm still now. Now fuck that man, I'm still working. Class. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but so, like, when I grew up, there was a lot, you know, there's a lot of trauma growing up um, 
my brother died when I was when I was eight years old, and, and that had a massive effect on, on the family house. And and I I went if you if there's anything about trauma, you, people go into like fight or flight or or freeze mode, you know. And I went into that whole freeze mode, and I didn't I didn't express emotions, or I didn't um, I didn't connect with relationships or anything like that for an awful long time. So I think mm-hmm. the way that in which I was able to express myself was was started to be through writing, you know. Um, like when I was in school, I was like I was the the quiet kind of geeky kid, you know. I was my head was too big for my shoulders. It was like a bleeding orange on a toothpick, you know what I mean? So like, you grew into that head. <laughs> a lot of steroids, and um, no, uh, but it was like like you're primed for bullying at that stage, you know what I mean? So you're kind of a loner, and. And and so then, like I just I like like in poetry class, I love poetry. Um, I was just really connected with some of the words, especially like Robert Frost's poem that the road less travelled, and and seeing that yes. you don't have to, yeah, you, you you don't have to be, um, I don't have to go the same path as everybody else. And that was that was the first poem that I really remember connecting with, you know. Um, and then, but then, like when I was like asked opinions in school around my opinions on poetry I was told that it was wrong and, and that if you wanted to get points in your leaving cert you had to have like x y all your ducks in a row to get these points and that that for me is kind of like it's the opposite of what poetry should be you know I think poetry mm. is a way of, of connecting people to the beauty of life or or, or the, the tragedy of life um, mm. or, or any any part of those really they're both kind of the same the beauty yeah. and the tragedy are, that, are yeah. the same yeah, that, and and it's just like, like like having those like visceral, guttural emotions to to, to some. It's not going to be to every poem, but every now and again you get those connections. Um, yes. And it's an it's an art form like no other from that that way, you know. Um, or maybe that's just my bias because I'm you know a poet. But uh, so yeah. I started writing then when I was about like thirteen or fourteen. Um, I didn't really think any anything of it, and um, so I was doing that for a while, and then. Then I joined like some bands, uh, like when I was around like nineteen twenty. Um, but I was I was riding the absolute pony. Like it was just, it was like it was kind of stereotypical. Um, I'm gonna write what I think people think is cool. You know, like mm. I gotta write about this. I'm a rock and roll star, and I'm you know yeah. like I'm the greatest. And and I like my my head was still like an orange on a toothpick. <laughs> so you can't be like a rock and roll star looking like that. Your head you know was too I mean? big for you. The head was just my shoulders were tiny. Emmett says I've no yeah. shoulders, so I had less shoulders back then. I need then. to see the pictures. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, they're terrible. Anyway, so I was like doing. I was I was still writing, still creating. You know, but um. I wouldn't get up on stage. It was just, it was just uh, me and mates in in, uh, in kind of sit rooms and bedrooms, just writing stuff together. And I loved it. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm kind of taking the piss out of it now. But it was a great, it was a great release. Um, and and that's when I, I and I thought that was kind of it. And then I I, I met up with some other kind of uh, I was doing some DJing as well. I used to have um, me and my sister used to run an underground rave in um, oh, Jesus Christ. in and around Dublin. So we had this like uh, it would have been called like a pop up nightclub where we used to just like pick different like basements in and around the city and and like ticket only events and we'd, we'd run that night DJ and, and I I loved it. You know what I mean? I, I really really loved that and I could perform then because I was kind of behind the the speakers were in front of me and and everything was out there and I was just in the background with my headphones on and that was my mm. first type of performances. Um, and then from there, I started working with some some music producers and uh, started just recording vocals on stuff and started dip my toes into a little bit of rap. Um, but I mm. didn't particularly. I, I I don't I didn't like what it, like the rap was really it was starting to be really politicized and and you know against a lot yeah. of um, the wars in Iraq and stuff like that. But I didn't think I didn't think I was particularly good at it, so I kind of came away from it. Um, and then, like when I when I turned when I just when I turned thirty, um, I started to go back to poetry again. I was in co- I went back to college to, to study to be a teacher, and uh, I started to go back to poetry again. One of my um, one of my lectures was brilliant that way, and and she kind of really fostered it. And so I just started writing, and started, and then it just started to like like flow. All of this stuff just started to flow out, and 
but but I it was just for me because I didn't know there was a, a poetry scene. I didn't even know that there could be a poetry scene. Do you know? Like mm. it was just um, I didn't know there was an open mic scene in Dublin. Um, so I was I was completely out of, out of the loop of everything and. Um, and then I, I met a mate of mine, uh, Niall Murray, who was a brilliant musician that used to be in a band called Handsome Handsome. And he was like, we need, we need to go to like, we need to get you to an open mic so you can, you can perform some of this stuff. Um, so we went to the Monday Echo that Aidan Murphy used to run in, in MVP. And that was my first performance in there. I, um, it, it was like typical open mic, you're there. John Cummins was performing that night, just absolutely blew my mind. Um, I think Josie Wales, the rapper, uh, performed that night as well, and there was a few just like, like really fucking big heads in the scene performing, and mm. this was incredible for for me to see, you know. And then, yeah. and then when you you know, like as everybody starts off, like in the open mic scene, you go into the the kind of slots at the end, the graveyard slots where you yeah, know, yeah. Where half the the crowd is gone, and that's kind of okay because you're only you're you're performing to maybe six or seven people. Mm. Um, so I was doing that for a while. Uh, did it for a couple of couple of times. Um, I was really really enjoying it, and was just starting to get then confidence in in performing and, and confidence in the reaction that the, I was getting from the crowd as well to actually think that the stuff you're doing is is. Uh, it's decent, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's yeah. okay, and, and it's hard it's to say that. with some people. Yeah, yeah, and, and um, like, I, I, I think you, you said it in one of the podcasts as well, that it's hard to, it's hard to accept when you, when you become an artist, uh, and to, to, or somebody said it on, on one of the podcasts, that, like, of holding that weight of, like, I'm an artist now, you know? Um, mm, uh, yes, or put, it's, it's about, you have to, are you willing to own being an artist or yeah. are you like oh no i'm not i'm not that thing and you feel kind of inadequate until you kind of have to it took me a while as a musician let's say to kind of i describe it as coming out as a musician yes yeah. i was doing the i was doing the music stuff and, but i was i was never i was like oh, i was keeping it at arm's length in a way that was my kind of protection mechanism yeah. um but it, so it took me a while to kind of uh, take that on board but yeah like so the way of of being an artist or just what do, what describing yourself as an artist or whatever you wanted it to be was so vastly different perhaps than how you seen yourself or how others had seen you up until that point. So perhaps that um, is per- something to do with the burden. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's exactly that, and I, I think that that actually that, that phrase of coming out as an artist, but, but you know, is is exactly it because like mm. I, when I grew up, like art was for was for the elite, you know, like yeah. it, it, it was you had to know. You had to understand all the cultural references. You had to be, you know, read in Greek mythology, and you, you know, you had to. You're looking at a painting, and you're, you're, discu- so it, like, but it's that's absolute bollocks. Like, it's none of that shit. You know what I mean? Like, art mm. is for everybody. So then to to actually admit to myself that, like, well, maybe I am an artist. You know, it's it's um, it was a big thing. You know, it was a really really big thing for me. Um, and then, but it was that was, that was open. I love the open mic scene. I absolutely love it. I think it's such an important part of the culture of this country. Um, mm. It gives such an amazing base uh, um, and starting point for so many artists. And like um, the likes of Shame is in the in the circus sessions, and and uh, you know Adam in the, in uh, Smithfield Creatives and. You know all the other ones across. You know the, the flow show, or, or you know. Shout even, out to Minty as well. Yeah, and the, and the, like <laughs> I haven't actually gone to because I've moved out of Dublin. I haven't actually been to the flow show, but I've just seen a lot of the stuff uh, online. Yeah, I think it's on a bit of a hiatus. Yeah, but 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 like the amount of work that goes into it, like and what Emmett does with his like he started off with vibrations and then he's gone on to a few different nights and now it's Dublin finest and all the, like the amount of work to get people up on stage and if you're doing it mm. every single week, like I just. I really admire, you know, anybody that does it. You know what I mean? And I think that it's a very, very selfless act. Um, yes. And uh, yeah, so I've like th- that was it. You know, what I mean, once I once I got a taste of the open mic scene, I was like, I was hooked. It is. It does become that that thing that you just just like w- once you break the seal of starting to perform, and 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 even though that you're still really nervous going up. It's just that energy, isn't it, that yes. you're getting from the crowd, and it could be like five people, or it could be, you know, fifty people. It doesn't matter. It's it's that that rush that you're getting. So yeah, that was kind of how I how I started. 
Yeah. Mm. And then I just well, it's kind of a, a part of um, the a part. I'm just trying to analyze now. Like, the, so when you get up, you get up on stage because, like, when you're, let's say, you're in the open mic scene. Like, imagine you're playing a virtual reality game where you're sitting in the open mic, and you know you're going to be called up soon. Like, so your part of you is kind of you're enjoying the show, but then there's this other part of you that is thinking about like you're going to be up or when am I going to be up? And then you get then they call your name. You that rush of like I'm going onto the stage now, and then transcending that like so there's like this predatory sort of um, reaction to people staring at you or whatever that you're transcending. You're basically transcending the human instinct to. To, to curl up into a ball yeah. into fear and which will happen you do like yeah. once it takes a while to kind of fully start to transcend them natural instincts of oh I'm scared people are staring at me but it's that the rush of doing that it's like it's like a drug in a way yeah yeah absolutely it, it is and there's there's like there's various different stages to to um to becoming the performer as well you know like I like I'm not too uh, concerned with getting published. I've never been really too concerned with getting published. I just want to perform. I just love performance, mm. you know. And I think that my that's why it's spoken word for me. It's the the antithesis of spoken word. It it is like I I want people when they um when they hear or experience my the poems that I've written. I want them to hear it in my voice. That's because that's mm. you know. And it goes back to the old ways of the like the Irish oral traditions. And I'm kind of very proud that I'm you know part of that um but then it, like yes. to, be, to become the performer like I, i've gone off and I'm, i've um done acting classes for a, a couple of years and then i've studied clowning as well to become more of a, an authentic performer um sorry I, clowning yeah yeah i studied with raymond Keane. um like a, a, a does that sound like what it means like clown college if i take it that well so it's yeah yeah, so, so I don't mean it in a disrespectful way no, at all. No, 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 man, yeah, like it's it's very different though because it's like it goes it goes back to like the like you're you're brought back into your absolute authentic self. So all you have, mm. you don't have a mask. You have the, the small red nose, and you you're just as you're saying there. You stand in front of 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 a group of people, and you just have to connect with them. You're not allowed to say anything. You have to connect, and the connection is real. And then you have to. You're tasked with making them laugh. So it's Whoa. like, yeah, it, it like it, it is the most. Oh my goodness, dude! It's on this. This is brilliant. It, it's on this again. It's on this. They do. He does it once a year. It's on this August. It's the most most amazing um, most amazing course life lessons most amazing thing that i've ever done Holy it, shit. like it it like you you sit you stand there and you're connecting with people and you are weeping like fully weeping and then you move to the next person and you make a connection with them and then you go into hysterics like it is i don't think i can i can describe it but you you but, but what happens is you were you were stripped completely back and then you realize like who you are as a performer and I, I started like from it I started to really respect my audience a lot more whereas like I the poet would go on the poet would perform and then Jeff would run off you know because I, I just mm. wasn't able to take the applause and then I, I, I then you know through working with Raymond he was like well you, you know your audience want to to applause and you have to respect them and you have to stand there and, and, and take it and leave, leave like so. You're en entering the stage and, and exiting the stage is is a big part of it because you're you're you know you're 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 talking to your audience or you communicate with your audience as yes. soon as you are there, you know. Um, and then it's like I, I see you can see like different different kind of levels of 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 people with their uh, levels of performance as they're going like, and it starts off the, the say with, with poetry the person goes and and they 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 have the the book and their head is down and they're they're buried in the book and as they're becoming more and more uh, confident, the book is there or the phone and the head is coming up and now now they're interacting with the audience, and then eventually mm -hmm. the the book will go and they'll start to learn off their stuff, and they'll they'll pace back and forth across the stage like this because that's that's how your mind remembers words it goes back and forth and you'll see people moving back and oh, forth at the stage yes. and then as the performer is getting more comfortable and it takes a while it's the the it the, the, the goal is to stand still um 
and to be there and then to, to add the actions that you need. So if I'm highlighting well, a word, my, my hand will come or that is. Yes. And, and it's instead of just being like, yeah, I'm up here all the time. And, and I, I think I noticed that what you were saying with, with Emmett, you were like, sometimes when you're nervous on stage, you, you, you rise up the basil and the basil levels yeah, go up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that could just come from 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 that 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 um, the levels of not being, you know, maybe that, that uncomfortableness. Whereas, yes. the, and the more that the more that you become there, the more you become your authentic self, and you're like, and you just well, this is how I want this song or this poem to be to be performed. You're so. This just hits on such a great uh, a point and learning of my own understanding about myself. I want to come back to the clowning because I think this is so interesting um, just for a little bit but just yeah, before yeah. then just on this point of um, yeah so I, I did a gig there recently where I was sitting down in front of a seated audience with my guitar and there was no like usually I'm trying to I'm just I'm like hey blah 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 like trying to keep it going trying to trying to just add little bits of funny stuff to it but I actually just sat down and the, my producer slash marketer guy uh, was running it, so he was just like, just play your fucking songs. Like, the, like forget about all this, like, other stuff or whatever, uh, which is good, but it takes, it, it, for, for me, I think I was getting too carried away with that part of it. So when there's lulls in the music or whatever, I'm not, I'm, I'm afraid because I don't, yeah. I'm like, yeah, there's like that fun, or, I don't know what it is, but basically I learned that, I just sat there, sang the songs, and I was relaxed, and I could focus. I focused just on the singing. I think before I've been focusing too much on the actual, like the the energy in the room. Because let's say in a conversation, I'm real focused on, or in a group setting, I want I want the energy. Like I'm real sensitive to kind of social cues. Let's say of are we enjoying this? Are we having a yeah. laugh? Like. I'm basically like it's a, probably like a psychopath or like it's it's not like super, no it's not, it sounds like, like uh, my brain normal. my brain analyzes every kind of li literally almost every interaction within like a few hours like let's say we're here for an hour in a group I'm like I've done a, my my brain is like tallying up like little like social points or or moments of 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 happiness and then it's summarizing that in like okay, yeah, this is going well, but it's subconscious. I can't really explain it, but with... Yeah, um, with I, I kind of get the, it, though. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, and I, I, I think that that is, that is normal. And, you know, and when, you're, you know, when you're performing on stage, you're kind of clocking people's... That, okay, that they're talking over there, so maybe they're not getting it, or, or they're over, over this. And then, yeah. and then, and then the, the, the space between... Like, the music, you're there, you're present, or the poem, you're there, you're present, and then you have that, that lull, which is the audience's chance to interact with you. So it's like, I'm not sure how they're going to interact, so I'm going to fill that space and then get them to laugh. So Because I know I can make them laugh, yes. but I don't know how they're going to react to... To the 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 poem, yes. The poem I've just I've just you know performed. So I, I maybe it maybe it is it's I'm too vulnerable to to accept whatever is coming my way with this. So I'll just I'll just fill that space and then I'm in control of, of the reaction that they're going to do. Um, you can yes. see that with a lot of performers, and I did it. Like I would do it. Like I think I think. Um, I, I I think it's a normal part of the process of, but then it, like I, that, I was going to ask you how you felt with the um, with sitting down because I'd say it was a lot more naked. It changed. It changed. Like so, just going back to that because you touched on such a good point with the with with the turning like we're trying to be funny and stuff. I think as well, it it protects me in like yeah. in a weird way because I'm like oh I'm not taking this super serious or something. Maybe that's another part of it. So yeah. it's like a protection mechanism. But after I sat down and sang, and I just sang, and I focused on the songs, so I was like, oh, this is the next song. And I just sang, and I was, I was real just, um, just concentrating on the singing. I felt, I felt way more at ease performing than I, I, I can remember up until that point. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I sang the songs better than I'd ever done at like any other like sort of open mic performance up until that point as well. And then I just realized... It was so I'm sitting down, I'm relaxed, and I'm just singing the songs. I'm not worried about oh, I need to also be that fucking other lad as well. Yeah. And it just it actually just has opened my mind now to. And then I did another one at the Brady session, where I just I made it all out to singing. And now I, I'm bringing that with me now forward. It's like when I'm singing, I'm singing, and I'm just I'm gonna and I'm gonna give give myself. And if 
if people like it, they like it. They don't, they don't. But I don't need to. I don't need to try win them over. With, now some yeah. stuff will still happen. You know what I mean? Because I yeah. care. Like I, I like like it's okay sometimes. But I need to focus on the art, on the music. Because I'm not like it's and degrading I, to the art in a yeah, way. But also onto the self as well. You know, like like we're never going to please everybody. And it's yes. funny. It's funny that. You know, you can get too hung up on, on trying to trying to please the 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 person or the group in the room that that doesn't like your art. You know, fuck mm. them. You know what I mean? Like, if they don't, that's grand. There's another. There's loads of different art for 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 those people. You know. Yeah. Um. There's lo- There's other other musicians. Or if you don't like poetry, I absolutely get it. You know what I mean? Like, poetry is not for everybody. Um. But there's loads of different art forms for people. But like, if it's it's like. I wouldn't, it's a process of, and this is a wholly subconscious thing, like, um, I was only saying to, to my wife yesterday, it was like, it's funny how when, when somebody, when you can't have something or, or, or somebody doesn't like you, that you try to please them or that's the thing you want, you know, the pizza mm. sold out, I got to go to that pizza place next week, you know what I mean, like, like that place is always sold yes. out, it's like, like yeah, you know it's cool, I mean? yeah. Um, but but it, and and it's like the person in the room they don't like me. Why don't they like my art? I put so much time into it. Why don't they like my art? It's like maybe they're never going to. So we don't need to please everybody. Mm. But it's more about it's it's more about that that of like that connection with the with the pieces and 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 being your authentic self on stage. This yes. is this is my best performance. I'm going to give you my best performance. And for me, that's going to be enough. And if it's not enough for you, well, I'm sorry, but this is this is who I am. And maybe I'll move on to the next one. You know what I mean? And maybe this isn't the yes. night for me. Uh, and that's okay. I've done some awful gigs, some absolutely awful, hear a pin drop in the really bad way. Like some gigs you hear a pin <laughs> drop and you're like, I'm quite new. Yeah, yeah. And other times you hear a pin drop and I'm like, I'm really sorry, but you're stuck with me for another <laughs> 20 minutes, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, like, and that that happens, and that's kind of, like, that, that's that's the evolution of the artist as well, yes. and of the performer, where, um, you know, that like, and you're, the, the goal is to become so comfortable on stage that you don't have to have, you don't need to fill in the bits in between, you know? That yes. It's like, yeah, here's, here's, here's that- my piece, here's my next piece, and then, and then yes. it just becomes like this, you know. And there's, yes, like, I, I don't like explaining my poems too much when I'm performing them. Um, I kind of like this is this is my poem. I, about half the time, I forget to what the name of like to even to give the title. I just perform the piece because yes. I, I kind of like people just to find their own meaning in it, you know. Um, mm. Who was it? Uh, Richard Ashcroft said years ago when he was asked on that one, the, um, the drugs don't work. And he was interviewed and they were like, what is the poem about? And he said, well, I'm not going to tell you, he said, because, uh, you know, some of the audience might have got, might have connected to it really, really strongly and gotten a very important meaning out of it. Uh, and it wouldn't be right for, for him to, to change that meaning and, and to change mm-hmm. it for somebody. Because, like, I'm writing the words from my own context and then somebody is listening to them from their own context. So they get, they might find something different in the words and when people used to say to me, "Is this what the poem is about?" I would just go, "Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta bang on." Because, like, yeah, well, it, it, like, this is the actual reality of the situation. This is just speaking there. When you write a poem, you are just basically letting your taste dictate the next set of words that come on the page. But after it's out into the world, you're like, sometimes I look at a poem and I'll, I'll, I interpret it. <laughs> Not after, after I'll, I'll be like, oh yeah, this is what this, like I'm rationalizing and we do this a lot. We're like, we rationalize after the fact. Like if I ask you what your favorite movie is, you'll tell me a movie. I could ask you why and you, you'll have a reason, but you don't really know why you just came up with that movie straight away. So yeah. we rationalize sort of inf- our actions after the fact, let's say. So there's always a part that like, and then to like when you're talking about, like people's interpretation of the art is actually the is what's real like our own individual interpretations as sort of these vehicles of consciousness it's it's hard to there's no real reality of of what that poem is except for in everybody's individual sort of consciousness and then the other part of it as well because i only had this thought today I was, um I love this film. Um it's called There Will Be Blood, right? And oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Daniel there's this, the character Daniel Plainview, right? Yeah, it's the, my 
I just can't. It's just the best on so many levels. But I was I was looking at a clip of that, and my, I was thinking, it, he never got into his full backstory. And I was just thinking, I can just make up his backstory. Yeah. And it's, why can't I? Just because the director, or it wasn't in the film. Like, who's to say that I can't just say what his backstory was? And why wouldn't that feel as real as if I had seen it play out in the film? And I was just, I was playing with this idea then. So it kind of ties in a little bit to our yeah, conversation. I think it's exactly that, because I think, like, in the, in the poems or in the music that you're writing, that there is, you know, like, it, it doesn't stop with just, the, with just the piece, you know what I mean? I, I tell some kind of stories and some, some pieces about my own life, so it's natural that people, as you're saying, that will fill in the story before it or will fill in the story of what, what comes after it, you know what I mean? And, the, and, that's, and then that becomes their reality. Um, so it like it, it's, it's exactly what you're saying, and it's a like a, it's a very big mm. philosophical thought there. But it's like like yes, yeah. That's you know I love this part of your podcast where you go on these huge yeah huge yeah. Uh, so, so, so but this is so this is this is um because I've been, I've been delving deeper into um this will t- I'll tie this back in a sec, but just our own sort of uh, like reality as humans, let's say, and all the stuff that's kind of like for example. When I, you know when you enjoy food and you you like oh, I love a good burger, like that. The reason that is is because, like over evolutionary time, the my my body my physiology started producing a a, a reward response to stuff that was gonna maintain the genes over time so with food it was like oh yeah keep reward that reward him with the dopamine when he does this when he has sex all this stuff but all that had to take place for me to experience this life as me and it's just it and with me with music and, and everything else like music apparently so i'm listening to a few books on this now um it, it was tied to like mating rituals like so dancing oh. It was like a way to show competence, like like in in uh, and intelligence through music and to another partner. So, the musical and and like the artistic, creative, um, sort of impulse is actually tied to one of our strongest uh, impulses, like from the genes perspective, which is like sex, and 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 like procreation. Let's say at one level, and so we're not, but we're not we're not consciously aware of that. We just know that. Um, and I just want to tie it back to just a little bit you said there about um, music versus poetry because it's really interesting because um, poetry poetry you could say is the most um, it's the most direct in terms of it's just words right yeah. and language to to elicit a response but but music is actually like we don't see it as a language but we learned the musical language of our culture as we were growing up so certain Absolutely musical characteristics let's say like i was listening to um a lot of music makes me very emotional and i don't really know why like uh, dancing yeah. queen by abba right there's a little bit of the piano it goes boo 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 and when i started really honing in on that i there was something so beautiful i can't i, I don't know why but that that spoke to me in the language of music let's say yeah. and it touched me in a way that I couldn't really sort of explain, but there is that. The but I think music and words, like they're both, they're both languages in some sense. Yeah, they absolutely. And and there's been times in my life, like when I'm when I'm having a really 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 hard time, I just I find myself connecting to like one or two songs, and I'll just have them on repeat and repeat yes. and repeat and repeat, and um. Like when I went through one particular breakup and I was just lost in life, I just listened to uh, to build a home by the cinematic orchestra, and it was just like you'd have it in floods of tears. And mm. um, but it was just it was just my way of like finding hope and finding like like joy again, you know. Um, yes. And and it, and it is a language, Do you know. Like it's it's like in in the sense of it doesn't have to have specifically have to be English you know what I mean but you can you can, mm. you can gravitate towards what, what people are saying through through um through any different art form you know what I mean like um it, 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 that's what that's what's so important and, and what's so beautiful about about art I, I think that you know it's so hard to define that people are like what is yes. art you know but I always think that it's how we understand life 
you know it's how mm. we connect and how we understand life and and yes. it, cause it, it has like so much of the it, it the, the spectrum of emotions you know the mm. absolute beauty and the tragedy as we spoke you know early on like it has yes. it all it has it all it has the mundane it has it has it you know the the, the most exciting lifts or the or the, the, the lowest lows and it has everything in between and you mm. can experience it at any time that you want you know the songs yes. that's your favorite song if you're having a bad day bang on a track it's like if i if you you know if there's a you know some different poems people will perform on stage and that takes you right back to a part in your life a part that yes. you maybe had forgotten about and that you're connecting to again or you're you're looking at, mm. a, at a, a painting and you're just seeing this like Caravaggio's taken a Christ in the National Gallery I just go in there and I just stare at it and I'm like he made black the most beautiful color and you're just like engrossed in this like masterpiece and I just yes. stand there, you know, and, and just take it in, you know, and like, and, that, and that's what, like, art is so important, you know, it's so important. And maybe that's why it's, it's so hard to, um, to accept that you're part of that, you know, that echelon of artists mm. that you're actually, you know, actually giving it to, and, and, you know, and, um, and creating yes. for the world in that way too, you know. Yes, and I think, like, part of the um, artistic impulse uh, and it kind of ties back into, into sort of, so so art itself, like like and our, like so we're living like a story. Let's say our fundamental beginning and end, as 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 Jeff and as as Basil or Donica, whoever, whatever you want to call me, uh, like that's a story. And then art that resonates with us in a kind of weird way, it's it's speaking to like a, a potential lesson or or a knowing or something that's been imprinted in our life for some reason that it resonates and then when you see like that the the nice the like the blackest black or like the like there's what is it there's like it's so it's sort of so ineffable in a way or it's like there's because let's say what we can remember about our own life is is not it's nowhere close to everything that we've experienced in our whole no. life. It's like if you it, not every, every single second that's built and imprinted itself upon me, there's so much that I'm not aware of, and there's so much that that's what when you when you find that song that you have on repeat, sometimes it's set like you're not really. Sometimes I know kind of the essence of what it is that's making me feel a certain way about this song, but really I'm just like I don't even know. There's something about it. <laughs> yeah yeah and and i think sometimes we we rush towards trying to have to explain everything um mm. and sometimes oh that's what it was yeah sorry yeah i wanted to get back on this explaining stuff because like you were saying like i don't i, I some people are good at, at, at formalizing the stories for their piece of art or whatever but a part of me feels like the art that, like my song, is the story that of this of the fucking thing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And if I want to explain it, I'd have to explain. I'd have to get into the like the little lines, because that's the most like for me. I could explain the individual little parts more than I could explain the whole thing in a weird way. But like with your, with your song Nelson, like that stirs up something in me that. I, I don't know I, I don't know how to how to describe it, but I'm like mm. I'm fully in that song, you know. And I, when it, I'm waiting for yes. that chorus, and I'm like, take me back to Nelson, you know, like take me back, take me back, man. Like yeah. what? It, there's something about the ethos of um, I don't know if there's this guy um, David Keenan. Uh, he yeah, has yeah. A, a song called uh, El Paso. Take me back to El Paso. It's like that. Take me back, even though you don't know Nelson. That long, like there's. We were talking. I was talking about this the other day. Someone texts me saying, "Remember the good old days, right?" Yeah. If you ever catch me saying the fucking good old days, like just <laughs> shoot me, right? Because that means that these, these aren't are the, the good, good old, old days. days. These, yeah, these exactly. are the good old days. <laughs> yeah. These are the good old days of tomorrow. Absolutely, you know what I mean? Man. Absolutely. So don't be fucking good old day yeah. in me. Like have your but, your good old days are now. But it's the, the whole thing of like living in the present, isn't it? You know, people tell you that the you know. For your for your mental health, the best place to be is the present. Um, and if you're constantly yes. looking to to the past or, or or you know looking forward to the future, then then you're you're not kind of 
accepting or, or not being able yes. to um, enjoy what's happening right now. Uh, yeah, yeah. And that, like, yes, so the way, the way um, I, I was listening to a podcast yesterday, uh, Sam Harris, he's doing this real good series on um, different topics that he's covered on his podcast in really in depth. But one of the, this topic was death. And uh, like that is something that I've, like, there's always room. It's always there. It's always ever present in a way. But he was describing in the light of death, nothing like everything is sacred and all your worries and cares and angers don't really exist. So he described road rage, right? So imagine I'm, I'm sitting behind you in the car and you're not going fast enough or yeah. whatever it is, right? I'm getting angry, right? But if I realize that one day I'm going to die, one day he's going to die, everyone he loves is going to die, everyone I love is going to... If, re- if you were thinking that in that moment, you couldn't get angry. You'd just be like, I'm so grateful to be <laughs> just here in this car. Me- meditation's great for that, you know? Like, um, yes. Of, of taking those few minutes out and just, you know... Closing your eyes and breathing and and um, and accepting yes. what's around it. I want to I want to get like, just because you touched on that. Um, because just on, when you when you said breathing there, uh, it just triggered the the that panic attack video that you did um, yeah. that I seen on a while ago, and I just thought it was it was so it was such a really cool uh, sort of a piece because it, it's trying to it's trying to capture an experience that's so that you can't really you, you know you know what it is i know what like that anxiety because i've had sort of um i mean health anxiety is something that i've kind of struggled and battled with um another thing i've started to get is like a uh, tinnitus oh yeah so i yeah, had this yeah. like ringing in my ear which i had for a while now which isn't too bad but if it changes or something like the pitch changes, I'm like, oh, that's the brain tumor. I'm gonna, it's all, it's all, it's I'm all fucked. gonna end now. Yeah, yeah fuck yeah, now. Yeah. Put me behind uh, that gun in the car. Let me be grateful, man. Yeah. <laughs> but that, but that sense of like the, the panic, the anxiety, and then, but then trying to, trying to, trying to win that battle in your mind, I suppose. Yeah. That's that. So that panic attack video feels like you're trying to, you're trying to win that battle. But what? What does sort of how did that piece come about, and what does that piece mean to you in a way? Um, like it's one of the more important pieces that I've written. You know, I I think, um, it's just, like it came about during lockdown, and then it was like towards the I think it was like twenty twenty it was twenty twenty one, and um, I like like myself and my wife were you know, like there was so much anxiety during lockdown. You know, you're stuck in your house, and and then. Something had happened, and I I got really upset over something, and uh, and that was fine. I just calmed down, and then we went down and and had dinner, and just went back to being normal, and went for a walk and all that. And then the next day, Rachel said to me, she was like, "You know, you had a panic attack last night," and I was like, "What? No, I haven't." I was like, "I get them all the time. They're, that's just me getting really upset." And she was like, "No, no, no. That that was a panic attack." And I I was like, "But I like, I've gotten them for." for so much through my life that I, I just kind of just acknowledged them and dealt with them and being like, like, this is, this is just, I'm just really, really, really upset today. And then it's going to be okay. And I, I think like, I know mental health is such a, a kind of a, a buzzwordy topic and stuff like that, that it can be that like, it's like, you know, look after your mental health and, and oh my, you know, look at what this big global company is, is doing and how important mental health is for us. But I, th- I think when you get down to the bones of it, like I think everybody really has times when they, they suffer with their own mental health and, and, um, and, they, and they build up resilience to deal with it too. Um, but it's, it's very hard to acknowledge it when it's, when it's you that, that is suffering, you know, because I, w- I would have given advice mm-hmm. to, to other people and, and helped them be very, very open about the fact that I was... Uh, kind of anxious as a child and, and, and suffered with my own but that, but that actually went like when it's like I'm a happy person I don't get panic attacks you know what I mean like you know what I mean but I, I, yes. so it was a big thing for me to, to realise that, that this is what it was you know um, and I think like 
part of part of me when, when Rachel was saying it to me was like I was like fucking hell you know like I I, uh, I don't know can I curse in the podcast I, I, I... you can do whatever you want yeah. I curse more than yeah. anybody probably sorry yeah um, so I was like yeah yeah I mean like this is a this is a big thing for me to deal with but also fucking nice one man I'm gonna write the bollocks out of this you know what I mean like it's... <laughs> all right I said you could curse but it's just like <laughs> no I don't even listen it's just like ah oh, fucking finally yeah, for uh, fuck's sake uh, so I was like but you kind of got I'm like because you want you know I think when you're when you're writing the, the stuff that's great is the real stuff you know the stuff that's really visceral the stuff that's the, you know the the real hurt or the real anger or the real the real love the the the, mm. you know and being able to I think you have to be able to connect with that to be able to write about it you, you can't just think oh I'm going to I'm going to write about anger and then be like but I'm not really angry today but I kind of you know it, it doesn't come you need to be really really honest yes. so I was um, I was just walking back across by uh, down by the brazen head uh, coming back across the, the river and then I just had that, I just had Rachel's words in my, my head about, it, you know, the panic attack. And then it just started to come into, like, breathe, breathe, slow, slow, breathe. And this was, mm. the, the, and then, like, finding the first line of, of a piece is, you know, it's like, it's like those bit of butterflies that are flying around. You catch one of the butterflies and you're like, I'm going to take yes. care of you, man. I'm going to take care of you. And you have to take care of it right then and there or else it's gone. Um, mm. So I just I just went into it. it was it was pissing down rain and I just ran into a doorway and just started writing it down and uh, it was one of those great pieces that like I just came it just flooded straight out it just was yes. was done there wasn't much editing with it um, I wrote it in about five minutes and uh, yeah or in around that and 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 then then mm. I did it and then I was really happy that I did it and then and then I started performing it and then. I like I, I edit as I perform. I think the pieces evolve on stage. Yes. Um and then uh so then when I when I got it to a stage where I, I was like, Okay, I'm kinda happy with it now, um I got in, in touch with a, a guy T J Hawhey, who's a fantastic um filmmaker, fantastic director and uh I was like, Look, I have this piece, um we'd been talking about working together for a while and, and I sent it on to him and he was like, Yeah, let's do this one. This is gonna be Let's do it. So um, I was lucky enough. I, I kind of lecture a bit in NCAD and they gave me the space there to film in for, for free, which was great. So it was a really, really intense shoot. It was the, the most intense shoot that I've done for anything. Um, like I had, a, I had a full day's work that I went in and I had to lecture for two hours in NCAD. And then TJ came in straight away because we had the place for three hours. So it was... Not ideal for me, but it was actually ideal for the, the, ah, the, journey yes. of the piece because I was like, I was so like, I, like exacerbated with the day, and yes. then and then he just had the, he just had the camera here, like he just had it here like this, and and it was like okay, we're going at it, and I, as soon as I finished it, he was like, let's go again. As soon as I finished it, let's go again. Let's go again. Yes. Let's go again. And we we performed that piece for like three hours, three or four hours straight, and then it was the second last take was the one that that was the the one that we used, and he, wow. he did the second last take, and then he went do it again, and I did it again, and my energy levels had dropped, and he was like, right, we're done, and uh, I I like I'm living in Kildare at the moment, but I, like I rang my wife and I was like. I'm gonna have to stay in Dublin tonight. I have no energy left. And she was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, cool, go, go off." So I had to. I literally mm. like walked. My mum and dad still in, still live in uh, in Manor Street in Stony Banner. So like I, I kind of walked across to them and I was like, "How are you, Matt? How are you, Dad?" They're like, "You staying tonight, son?" I was like, "Yeah." Walked straight up the stairs and hit the bed. Yeah. And out cold. <laughs> out because it's well. such a like it's such a like even when I perform oh, yes. on stage like it's such an intense piece. But to do it for like three three four hours straight was like I was I was gone. Yeah, but I'm delighted with the outcome of it. Like I'm really, really happy with the, with the video, and uh, I think I think they they both go hand in hand. I think what TJ done with the video is is exceptional. Yeah, that's what I really liked about it. It was um, it's 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 it, it's it's not just a recording of the piece. It actually it's like it's kind of like an enhancement in a way, or it's like a complementary. It, it's like they're both. They're it's so. The video and the actual piece itself uh, are are basically they feel like 
close yeah. together in a yeah. weird way. It's its own because piece of it's, art, it's, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, yes. It's not just a video of you doing it. It's 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 the, it's the video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to explain. No, I think it, I think it is. Like I think they both. Like it was, it was absolutely brilliant working with TJ because I think like when you when you collaborate with somebody, it's very important to have a trusting relationship with them. But like we don't, yes. we kind of met a, a lot beforehand, just like through through friends and stuff like that. But hadn't really had that like that much time together one on one. Um, and when I'm collaborating with people, I'm just like, look, I know nothing about whatever you're doing. I just I know poetry. So you do your thing and I'll do my thing and then we'll 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 make the we'll make the yoke. And yes. uh, but I, but with with TJ, he just gave like he, he was not afraid to give little tips. He was like, Why don't you see that line you have there? Why don't you just before that line do this? And I was like, All oh, right, yeah, right, right, we're in this space now. Right, cool. And then I try that and he's like, yeah. yeah, I think that's working. Okay, do do this as well. And then I originally I had a, a, an idea for the the um, the video to be down here, you know, that I'd be looking down, and and if for it to be breathing in and out like this, um, and I thought that, that so I said that to him and he tried it and he was just like, nah, that doesn't work, Jeff. We're gonna do it like this. We'll do it wider. We'll do it more narrow. We did it a lot of different yeah. ways. And I love working with somebody like that where they're just honest and you, you instead of it being like, yes. yeah, I tip, yeah, no, I can see what you're doing. And you say, oh, fuck that, man. I want to make great art. Yes. You tell me if it's good or if it's shite. And whatever whatever your, your opinion is, we'll work with it. You know what I mean? I'm not precious. Yes. So he was great at just being completely honest. And, uh, and he really, really, really pushed me. He really pushed me. There was a time I needed a break for a, a, a drink of water, and he was like, "Okay, right, let's shoot again." And I was like, "Fuck oh, yeah, man! Okay, man, yeah, I'll go. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get up and I'll get on it." Um, but it was yeah, it was a great process, and I do, I, you know, I do agree with you. I think they're both now that they're they're both linked as just this mm. one, one really solid piece. Yes, and and just you touched on so much uh, great stuff there, uh, but just when you're working with somebody that you've you've asked to come along for a very specific reason they they have expertise in a particular domain in this re respect it was like a camera uh, the video world let's say yeah and like we as when you don't have an idea like you had an idea of what would look cool right but i've learned this i've a done a little bit of video and stuff right and the idea like might sound cool but it doesn't it's not practical or yeah. it just comes across not great but to the untrained camera person or whatever or you haven't done it you, it doesn't you just know but like so he tried it out and then gave his his ex because why was he there to give his expert opinion Absolutely. to have that expertise and if you if, if you you need if, when you have people around you like that if you've like with my music producer i'm just i trust i'm like i want him to work it in it like as a, autonomously as possible so then he can take because then they take responsibility for the work. If you're micromanaging somebody, or if you're if you're like too overbearing, then they're not they're working for you. They're not working with you in a way. Absolutely. So you yeah. want you want everybody taking full responsibility and ownership because if you if you have any pride in your work, then that pushes you to uh, to to create the best work that you could possibly be. So you want to liberate them to do that as much yeah. as possible, and even. I'm working with um, I'm doing we're doing uh, doing the creatures of habit like uh, oh uh, man, I only saw and Jimmy. I saw those lads the first time ever uh, like two weeks ago because um, I got I got yes. Steve Smith at Creatives like they're 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 a lot of fun. Uh, I really enjoy. They're those. so fun. Yeah, yeah. I fucking for my cup of tea. Like I I just love and the podcast I did with them. They're my I just sit I just hang around. I love them lads. So. Uh, but we're going to be doing a gig. It hasn't been announced yet, but it might be announced by the time. But uh, we're doing a song together, like Lovely. so. Like well, I'm going to be, I'm going to be doing a rap verse. Uh, I don't nice. want to give too much away. But because I'm working with, because I love that, like, like their their style as well. And Dylan, who I've seen perform uh, a lot on his own, like he's really impressed me with his like sort of lyrical ability and 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 just his delivery and his wordplay. 
So that's when I was writing my verse. I'm like, F- I need to fucking. It pushed me it to does, write. Yeah, I yeah. got like I, I, feel, I'm really proud of it. But I put a lot of fucking work into yeah. it because I wanted it to be cool yeah. and and like up to like. Well, I'm gonna put. I'm, if he's bringing it, I'm gonna fucking bring it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, but that that and then that allows that. Uh, but once you have that, like I'm I, like we just call. Oh, we're gonna make a song for this gig that we're gonna do. Um, but we'll all do a verse and we'll come together on the court. We'll figure out the chorus together. But we all need like that autonomy. Like, don't be micromanaging people. Let them have that autonomy and ownership, so then yeah. they can they can fully sort of take uh, pride in their work. But it's it's great that you had that relationship with TJ. But I think I've, I've had it with a load of different artists. You know, like I, I think they can become overly precious about your work. You know, and I yes. think if you're if you're thinking about collaborating with somebody. That you have to remember, it is a collaboration. That you're both there, and you have to meet somewhere. And and that that doesn't mean that one person's art is is elevated or over the other. Like, you know, with the video shoots that I've done for any of my stuff, I'm like, you know, well, like my art is here, but you as a filmmaker is here. So we'll we'll just we'll you know we'll just meet and mm, uh, create something new. Create something new, you know. And 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 it's like, and the and the pieces evolve and stuff from that too, you know, like. Like me and Emma have worked together on so much stuff, and and like, I know when I show Emma a new piece, I know when I show him a new piece, he'll just give me his honest opinion. He'll be like, "Yeah, yeah, it's not one of your best," or like, "I think you're going the right way, but but have you thought about have you thought about this or what?" Or or else he'll be like, "That's an absolute banger," um, and it, I think it's really really important to have th- those those people in your life too that that can. Yes. That can keep you like. I suppose it's like your your music producer, um, who is like you know, this is really working. Um, Basil, or do you, do you want to you know want to try try this instead of it, or push it like yeah. this, or, or whatever? And and then it does stretch you and push you, pushes you to, uh, to like different levels that you you are challenging to, to to go to different places that you wouldn't possibly go on your own as an artist. Yes, and but you need that. Uh, you need that honesty. Yeah. The person who. Uh... Me and my brother have like, like if I if I think something's funny or something, or we've we've written kind of sketches together and uh, things of that nature. But uh, I could have something that I think is brilliant, and I show him, and I just like straight away. It's always just as. But I'm we're just straight with each other, yeah. which it can be kind of disappointing. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It can be real disappointed because you're like, ah, oh, fuck! I thought I thought this was, but it's not. It wasn't good. Yeah. Uh, but. When you do get that positive, when you know that you're on the right path, that's what you want to know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And you like, want to know this is working. Yeah, because like otherwise you're just going to be, you know, like for somebody to tell you you're great all the time it is it's not a, like a healthy thing, you know. And no. I think you need to have that that you know little bit of your your foundations or whatever you're stepping on that you're a little bit unsure because the, you know because you, if you're too comfortable then you'll just plow out the same drivel you know you, you have to be unsure yes. and you have to be challenged to, to be make to make sure you're like i don't know if this is good i'll try it out i think i think open mics are great for that as well because like crowds are very honest and if you try something yes. you can you can hear them they'll, they'll applaud you but it's like whether or not they're gonna like really applaud you or whether they're not they're going ah, that was that was you know fair play to you that was yeah. you know and if they're giving you the fair yeah, play yeah, to you yeah. you gotta you gotta you gotta come back next week with something different um, yes, and it, yeah, you know, but, you gotta just go back to the drawing board a bit. Yeah, and and look, like failure is so important. Like it's so important, like to try something. You know, Becca has that amazing quote. You know, ever tried, ever failed, no matter. Try again, fail again, fail better, and mm. and like that is that is that's really it. I mean, that that's that's kind of like as an artist, you've got to embrace that because you're not going to be producing great stuff all the time, and you might work for for weeks or months and something. And then at the end of it, it's just average, and that's okay. Mm. But and then you go off. Yeah. It doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that you're an average artist. It just means that this piece isn't your best, and you can go off and do it. Yeah. And sometimes, See, sometimes also, whole, you can yes. you can write something that that you know audience don't connect to, but you really connect to, and and you you can be just proud of the fact that I well I think this is great and good because you you should mm. have that confidence in your work too. You know, one hundred percent. Yeah. So yeah, the whole the whole aspect of uh, especially with creative work, it's something that um, the, I just think I think a lot about 
these sort of esoteric uh, sides of things, like what does it mean to create, what does it mean to be an artist, and what does it mean for a piece of work to even be created, let's say. So let's say, for example, with that panic attack, um, first, the first, oh, just wrote it, and then you had it there, then you performed it, it slowly chiseled away a bit, and then uh, it became the video. But like at what point, so then you might say now it's finished. But like if you, let's say, for example, you could, if you went up on stage and then you found out that, okay, when I, when I, maybe there was a part in it where you just said, fuck, 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 fuck. And it just, it just didn't come, it didn't get your point across. Yeah. Let's say, for example, that was it. So then you scrapped that and then you thought using the word cunt was the way and then cunt wasn't the word. <laughs> so then you, 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 so, but if it, that could, and it could take ages and it, that, you might see that as failure, but at some point, like when you start and then you end, you decide when it's finished in a way. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you're the, you can decide it's finished at any point. But failure in in respect of the creative work, it's not even um, it's not really even failure. It's like it's just you you're making the artist isn't finished yet. It's yeah. just an, it's like it's like it's just a part of the whole like story of that piece's creation yeah. in a weird way. But it's also really important to know when a piece is finished. Do you know that that it's not oh, like yeah. you're not you're not just chipping away at it because you can just, if you keep chipping away at it, you can take a block off and then it's gone and then the magic of it is lost. So I think there is a, there, yes. it is a fine balance between, you know, knowing that a piece is, you know, that you have a rough, you know, a rough unpolished gem and that you're working away at it and, and going at it and then eventually, eventually you ha it has to be finished. Otherwise, otherwise nothing yes. gets done, you know. The album doesn't get made, the book doesn't get made, the, the play doesn't get made. It's like, it's never going to be ready. Eventually it has to be ready for the audience and you have to put it out there. Yes. Um, there's, there's a brilliant, um, there's a brilliant actor, his name is Connor Burke and he's, uh, he's from Kildare and he studied over, over in London and he puts his plays on as soon as they're ready. Like, they're not even ready. He puts his plays on, yeah. on, and then he's like, okay, this is my first my first part of the play. And, and I really admire that. And Emmett does this as well. Emmett is brilliant at doing this. Emmett's like, I'm writing a play. Uh, I'm writing a, a one-person show. I'm putting it, and I'm putting it on stage on this day. And then I'd, I'd, be, like, I'd be getting, like, anxious. I was like, fucking hell, dude. Like, that's, like, that's a big undertaking. And he's like, no, I'm putting it on. And then he puts it on. And that's that's the beginning of it, and then he starts it. And like yes. his uh, his speckled dove show has has um, has evolved. You know, he's performed it a few times, and, and it has evolved with him. Yes, and it's a great way of doing things because he's just he's fearless. You know, like Emmett. Yes. Emmett is a like yes. he's an absolutely fearless artist, and he gets things done. You know, and like um, it's a brilliant poet, uh, Colin Keegan. Uh, somebody I've really admired and, and has been a like a mentor to me over the years, and, and he says, you know, artists get things done. You know, people, people, a lot of people can make art, but artists get things done. And I think that's really important yes. to remember that, that it's like you could create all you want, but unless you 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 put it out, then it, that's all it's going to be. It's going to just like stay in your in your bedroom or in your in your book or in your, yes. in your laptop. But just get it out because. It might never get to the levels that you've set yourself, this level of perfection that I don't think exists. Um, but mm. actually just, you know, you know, you know, getting it out is such an important part of being the artist, you know. Um, and there's a bravery yes, to that, you know. I love that with uh, the fearlessness of just... Um, well, it's like, it's like if you approach art the way stand-up comedians approach creating a set, it's like they go out, they try it out. Like that's the most sort of... Um, visceral or the most like sort of direct connection with an audience yeah. where the, like you're literally relying on the audience's laughs yeah, or not yeah. to help evolve the, the art in a way but if you if you're the more when you perform like for for songs especially for songs and for pieces of of, of, of anything really when you perform it you're seeing it in a different way and then the more times you do that you're realizing you're learning more about it and there's there's just that's part of i think actually performing it is also part of the creation process it's yeah. but this, if you just think like where it's like what he said i didn't even know the speckled dove like it is even a thing i want to get back to one man shows because this is a really interesting idea but uh but just that idea of 
this is part of the evolution of it. Like I need now it's now it's ready, like in this form, and now I'm gonna get it out, and then it it could potentially even evolve uh, from then in a way, yeah. and that's also just that's like. But then you're ta- like the more you finish things, like finishing something, it has kind of like a psychological effect. Where you're like, oh, I'm like, like with that album I've done now that I've recorded and it's going to be released in like September. Now that I've, now that I, in my head that's finished. Now I'm like, all right, now it's on to the next next one. Forget about all the little fucking, like whatever I feel are little mistakes that aren't even that aren't worth any of my time. Now I'm just moving on and I'm and all all my learning. I'm taking that into the next one. You know what I mean? So then the next version or the next piece, the uh, next album that I do will have benefited because I finished and put out the first one. But it's all about just like, I think getting your art, like putting it out and then that release, there's like a cycle, I think. And if you don't finish or if you're always picking at things or you're, you're never going to like finishing allows you to evolve and and go into your next form. Yeah. Like when you write now, like you have your te- like when I was when everyone starts writing. If you compare your like when I start writing a song now, I have an intuition for like words and the feelings that I that I enjoy that I'm trying to elicit. So I'm much more in tune with when I'm right when a melody isn't hitting me. I'm just like no no I need to and then I'll I'll keep like whistling I'll keep doing it until I'm like. Oh yeah, that's the melody. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. when I have that, then then but I know now what I I like. I don't even know what it is. What I just the only way I can describe it is that I follow. I just follow my energy. Like if I'm feeling po- like I I know there's a particular um, form of energy that if I if I'm hitting that while I'm hearing or listening to something I'm creating, then I'm on a good place. But if you're like let's say for example when you're not when I'm Let's say I finish a song, the next day I sing it, and I notice that there's a little bit or something, or there's a word that I know that I could leave it, but it, I'm not happy about it. There's some, I don't know it's why. It's the stone in the shoe, I'm man. Just not happy. It's the stone in the shoe. Yeah, the stone in the shoe! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck. You got it, like, you, I can still walk down this street, but this stone is doing what you're headed. So I gotta fix it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, it look like there's some people that say that creation comes from from somewhere else and it's channeled through you, you know. And and maybe that's the case. But I, I like I think that kind of takes away a little bit from the amount of work that artists do, you know. Like mm. so, say that that like what I was saying earlier, like the panic attack poem that it, like it, I I I wrote it in five minutes. It didn't take me five minutes to write. It took me, you know, my entire life. A lifetime, you know? yes. So, like, I, would, I wouldn't have been able to take... If I had that idea, like, 20 years ago, I wouldn't have been able to put it down, you know? I wouldn't have been able to know what to do with it. So, it's it, like, it takes you an awful long time to get to the stage where you, you have the talent, you, you have the experience, and you have the understanding of how you create that you let that process happen. Like that's, I think it's more yes. about that than just saying that it comes from this, this higher power. Mm-hmm. I, I think we, we are, we are the, the, the power that that's making it happen. You know, that it's, yes. yeah, that it's like, we are the vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. And we've worked and bloody hard on it. For, not for some higher thing. Yeah. Yeah. We, like, this is such a good point. It's not like we've lived, like when we, if I got to right now, it took me, like 31 years to write this sentence. You know what I mean? Yeah. It took everything that I've gone through now to produce this and to and to cre- and to have lived a life that has created a, a mind that thinks in a particular yeah. way, that has taste for particular words or, or scent. Or it does, everything that it takes to create as I can create, it took and only you can create. my life. And only you can create. Yes. Like if you, you and you've spoken about like massive philosophical ideas um, on, on so many of your podcasts, and here again today, I, I, one thing that that I I uh, teach and when in in the workshops that I give, I say to the people there, there's been like over four billion years in this universe, and people have been on the earth for you know hundreds of thousands of years. Nobody has ever written what you've written. In the history of humanity, nobody has ever written what you've written. So those pieces, those pieces are unique and they're special in their own way. And it takes an awful lot of, of guts 
to to be vulnerable enough to put that pen to paper or put that that you know your hand to those cords or to pick up that paintbrush yes. and, and to do it you know what i mean i think it takes an awful lot of bravery to, to, to be you know exposed enough to do that and then to expose yourself even more to present it to the world um so like wow. there is something really really beautiful like it's the it's the essence of of beauty if, if, in what you're doing and in you know and that's why i say like for to say that it comes from a higher power for me anyway i, I think it diminishes the work that you that you put in um and the, the experiences you're, you're that just you're helping me uh you're helping me like I'm getting goosebumps now because I'm just getting this image now of the whole universe from the big bang right yeah, yeah. fast forward right just yeah. holding fast forward on, and then the last few frames the tip of my pen hits the page but it's that man you know just from the big fucking bang to that fucking moment that's what it took to create that fucking thing yeah there's a, there's a line that I have in one of my poems, it's a poem about a breakup, um, and it says, it's like evolution evolved just to make this relationship just for, just to be true, I think it is. You know, it's like, it's like, but the, like, evolution evolved for us to be here. Maybe it's not, the, it wasn't the exact plan, but like, after all of these, you know, billions of years, here we are, you know, going about life in our own thing. It's, so, so you, yes. you were talking about like being behind the car, you know, being grateful that, you know, that we're here. I mean, like this, the fact that we're here is is quite extraordinary uh, and the fact that we're yes. able to create and the fact that we're able to connect with people is 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 amazing like i i really don't take it for granted you know i've loved every performance i love every time anybody asks me to perform um i love every audience that i, I engage with even the gigs that have gone mm. terribly um I, i've enjoyed it all i and i and I'm, i i love the fact that I get to be an artist. It is such an important yes. part of me, you know. Um, but as I said, like it took me, it took me years to, to be able to get the, the guts to get up on stage. And now that I'm up here, like I don't want to get off, you know. Like yeah. it's you know, and I, I'm you couldn't drag it. No, but I want, and I want to make sure that, I, like, when I'm up here, that I'm giving the audience the best version of myself that I can give, you know, that I'm not just, yes. I, I don't want to ever just phone it in. I want to get up there and I want to be mm. continually doing courses to, to stretch myself, continually working with artists yes. that, that, you know, that I admire, uh, continually trying to write stuff that, that uh, is out of my comfort zone and, um, and, and get into those places where I, you know, like, like they say, who was it? David Bowie said that like, as an artist, you should be in a, a, like it's like being in a, a, a body of water, uh, but you're on your tippy toes. So the water, you're on your tippy toes. The water is just at your chin, so that you're not entirely comfortable. Mm -hmm. So you have to stay in your toes to make sure that you're creating. Uh, ah, brilliant! Yeah, and it should be like that. You shouldn't be comfortable in that water and be like, I can just bang out a poem or I can bang out a song, and I know I can do this. Mm. It should be stretching yourself constantly to create something uh, that is in your voice, that is in your authentic voice, but also yes. that that it is in that place where you, you that there's a danger to it. Do you know what I mean? That there's a danger that you might fail in the, in this project that you're doing. Yes. You know that 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 it's um that it's not just doing the same thing banging it out over again exactly and look and i love that yes yeah but but there, and go ahead there, there's some people that that um some artists and, and you get to a level and maybe and maybe that's your level and that's okay you know I, I don't want to be kind of shitting at anybody's anybody's form but just for me I, i'm saying i'm thinking of me I, I don't want to get to a stage where like i'm comfortable and like i know i can write a, a five minute piece that that kind of rhymes and tells a story and I can go in depth into it and use different rhyming methods and different couplets and different kind of ways of telling it. Like I know I can do that and I can do it out in front of like, but I want to, like for me to, I, I, for, to feel challenged, I need to just change it and I need to be doing something different all the time. And I'm pushing myself into places that, um, that I, I don't want to be, but that I need to be. Yes. This is brilliant. Uh, Cause it's, it's very interesting. Um, just this, this whole concept of, so imagine when you when you haven't created anything, right? Like the possibility, like you can do any, you can do a piece on any word, anything, right? But then as you start creating, right, um, it's funny because there's some songs that, like, let's say, because they have a title, let's say, it's called Regret. Let's just say one of them. Regret. It's such a, 
it's one of the strongest like words that we have in our vocabulary, like this, like of emotion, whatever. But once you've done a song like called regret, it's like. <laughs> can you do another one yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? it's like it's time you've done you've done that now and it's like ah oh, fuck it's like yeah. well I'm, now I need to like, I regret doing that one team. I have to go for another one <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah exactly I used that as yeah. well but uh, when I heard I read um, Emmett did a poem uh, a while ago and it was beautiful it was called it was like the it was called the like the, the clocks the there's something to do with the hands of a clock oh yeah, they, yeah yeah um, yeah they help each other and it was such a clever but it's like well, i was still thinking he because i've seen that now he's explored the face of the clock and the hands of the clock and he came up with this beautiful metaphor of them working together and coming together and i was just like ah oh, well like i can't fo- now I, 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 I wish I could die about that now, but I feel like a part of me was thinking someone's already explored the uh, clock. They, you, we can't think like that because somebody's already explored everything. Every, <laughs> I know, every, I know. Everything that, that, that you want to write about has already been written. So it's yes. not about, like, like you look at, at any, any film that's, that's there or any book that's written, they tell the same story just in a different way. It's the hero's journey. It's yes. the, the stranger comes to town. It's the anti-hero. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's the same story, just mm. all in a, in a different way. Um, so I think if we, if we kind of put that block in front of us saying like, I'm not allowed to write about this because it's already been done, then, then we, you wouldn't do anything. But it's like, okay, 100%. yeah, well, what do I want to write? Because like, you're going to put your unique your unique perspective on it. I I think the only things really that we shouldn't write about are, are things we don't know. You know, like, I think there's a danger mm. to writing, like, I, I wouldn't write a Black Lives Matter poem because, like, mm. I'm a, a white, white male that has never felt that level of oppression, you know, and that, mm. like, maybe I, like, I feel very, very strongly about the movement and I, I, you know, really believe in equality but that's not my story to tell you know i can write about growing up in a in a a working class family and the oppression that that you know that is around in society how like if you're from donnybrook 96 percent of people out there go to third level education but if you're from darndale 12 percent of people go to third level education i could talk about that oppression because i've grown up in a, in a working class background mm. but i can't i yes. can't talk about I can't talk about trans rights. I can't talk about um, anything like that. And, and I, I don't think I should. I, I could talk about it, but I don't think I should. Um, and I, It's not that you should. It's like, you, it's like where would you... Like, are you going to be able to give the best take no. or, or offer something of, of worth in that space? It's like, where can you give them... Where can you get the most bang for your book? Yeah, and uh, but also, like, you know... If people are going to hear, hear something on those topics... Yeah, like th- nobody's going to connect with my stuff. If I was to write about that, nobody's yes. going to connect it, I and mean, it's just going to piss off a lot of people. It's like, what the fuck is Jeff doing writing about that? You know what I mean? Like, whereas, mm. like, and that, then that, then that, I think, take detracts from the movement itself. Or, um, it's like, yeah, but you, so you have a particular, like, you're just describing a particular uh, taste for like making like in, for your for your work it's like I want to cr- I need to be able to create from a place of sort of experience and something yeah. that I can actually write about that's that's tangibly uh, something that I I know in a kind yeah. of way I think that's really important because I think when when people start writing with stuff they don't know you can kind of see through it that they haven't maybe done the research on it or that they're they're talking about what they think it it, it, it feels like um yes. it's like if you look my um my wife has taught me an awful lot about um the male perspective in in films and um like there's a film called irreversible by gaspar noe and um and she was saying that the rape scene in that is very like realistic because the woman just stops like whereas when may, men write about rape scenes in particular movies the woman's always fighting back which do, doesn't happen it's just mm-hmm. our male perspective on it so like men shouldn't be writing about that because they're offending you know half the population you know and, it, and it's, it's not that mm-hmm. and, and that can be like th- th- that could be the type of stuff that it is um that you, you can they're not given an authentic uh, version you don't of know the about experience. it you've never experienced it yourself so like you're writing about what you think the experience is like rather than 
writing about what it is mm. and when you're writing about stuff like that you know it's you know, it's a it's a kind of a yes. and it's important to get it right you know yes it's important like so that's that's the so this the, the core thing there it's important to get things right when they're like of matters of high importance yeah. or there needs there needs to be integrity um behind the work it, when we when we tackle parts of the human experience that are like the most sort of um trite or just the most you know the the, the most the, like the highest for like the worst and the best like it's like you need to if you're going to give an interpretation of that it like it can't you can't just like for the worst case imagine i just start writing about how how everyone enjoys rape everyone oh yeah it's just a great experience for everybody involved like that's on the extreme end but like you, you could say straight away like what the fuck are you doing doing that yeah. that is yeah. not the case so Absolutely. then so then if you if you bring that back so it's like you you, you want to make sure that you do get certain like them parts of our, the human experience uh correct if you're gonna if you're gonna put pen to paper yeah. and even the panic attack it's like you like i could imagine i just thought oh, i read a piece about panic attack that was just like oh yeah you just you get your panic attack and then you, you just say <laughs> yeah. uh, you, you swear and it's grand like you know just right. fucking you just have a little way you do whatever the <laughs> stupid thing is right i mean, I just degrade the whole yeah. fucking thing yeah, that's it like that's not gonna cut that's the thing you're degrading it whereas yeah. to get to art if you're gonna do art in, in a meaningful kind of way i think what you're like you're showing me here is that it's like to, to 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 bring forth the reality of the experience and showcase it in 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 its in a yeah, way that is honest, what yeah, it is. Yeah, like so. Yes, honest yeah, way. So, so I, I've worked an awful lot with um. So I workshop with different marginalized groups. You know, I do an, an awful lot of work with marginalized groups. Um, and one of the groups that I've worked with is uh, is travelers, male, male travelers in uh, from Pavi Point. And so I was um. When I went in, I was to write a poem with, with these men. There was like uh, six or eight men. They, the groups kind of changed over the, over the weeks um, ar around what it was to be a traveller. So, like, I hadn't a clue, right? I hadn't an absolute clue. And I went in and I said that to them at the beginning. It was like, look, I'm, I'm you know, from the, the inner city. I'm white. I'm not a traveller. I don't know what it means to be a traveller. I'm not going to pretend that I know anything about this. But we'll just workshop together and then we'll we'll see what comes out. And if you're not happy with the end, end uh, result, then we just won't won't do it. Um, so I spent a really intense six months with these men. An incredible, the, the first time I, I, did, I did workshops with them, but it was an incredible experience, you know. And like I found it very, very difficult because I was seeing this whole different level of oppression and racism, really, you know, that... Um, that these men faced and, and, and travellers face on a daily basis. Um, so I wrote a piece called Gloak, which was the lived experiences of the men in that group. Um, and that's now used for, for, uh, for travellers across the country to help them, help bring people into, into like mental health groups and help them connect and show them the, 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 the importance of expression. Um, and it was done in the in the Chamber of Commerce in front of of uh, the government to try and help change uh, government policy on travellers as well. But it and it was done because it was it was a true reflection of what it is to be a traveller man. Now, if I had just said, mm. right, well, I'm going to do my own research and I'm look up. Well, travellers face a lot of racism. I can see that. So, um, and then started to write about being a traveller without having spoken to to any of the men yes. or without having you know not just spoken but actually sat and 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 opened up and workshopped and experienced there's not a hope that i could have wrote i would have just offended everybody mm -hmm. you know whereas actually like, get, yes. like getting involved in it and um and becoming part of that of that process and trying to trying to understand as best i could ended up with the poem and it was like in a similar way like not the same but it but it, um like at the moment i'm working with um i've been, I've been workshopping with people in addiction and uh, who are in addiction and who are who are in recovery and we've been working around like um showing the importance of of voice and how voice can can affect social change so 
we'd been writing poems mm-hmm. together and uh and and then at the end of it they were like oh, oh well you can write a will you write a poem on this for us and i started to try and write the poem and write the poem and i'm like i've been with you for like three four months now but i still don't know what it's like to be an addict so mm-hmm. i didn't feel that my poem was was good enough, was, was honest enough. Yes. Uh, I, a true I didn't think it was a true the, reflection. Yes. So we used then like the poems that the people in, in the group did. We worked a little bit more on them. And now those poems are being um, presented and performed in front of the Citizens Assembly on, on drugs at the moment to help change drug policy in, in this country. So mm. like, if, if they had used the poem that I wrote, that wouldn't have had the impact because it's not exactly how, you know, it's not exactly what it yes, what, this, what happens, you know. This is why, this is why it's actually real important that um, the art has, uh, hopefully, some integrity. Yeah, absolutely. And speaks to uh, uh, an understood perspective, or at least as, as good as you can understand something. Because there's a like, for example, like that panic attack video. If people people are very people like. I'm very open and forthright with my emotional state, let's say, and I'm, I like, but that, but, but not, not everybody is even able, like, let's say my o- uncles, the older generation, they have a hard time showing emotion. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like even saying I love you, uh, I've kind of forced my lo- like I ha- like it's hard for them to even have a hug, yeah. and it's 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 like there's people out there that. They'd be afraid to even acknowledge the fact that they're not feeling good or bad. But when you see that video and you just think, oh, like even if it's even if that video is showing an extreme, the, the most extreme version of, let's say, um, what anxiety can provoke in somebody. Let's just say, right, then then that gives someone a, fl- a taste of like, oh, well, that's someone else is experiencing that as well. And, yeah. it, and it broadens the, their hopefully their horizon of what they can comfortably accept about themselves and bring forth to the world and then same with addiction it's like how can if you if the more we can better understand it the more we can sort of facilitate the humanization of of people that are that are just that are just have found themselves in a situation that like we we can let's say we can condemn otherwise if we don't have the proper understanding and that's what poetry and art can do it can just it's like it can just transport that understanding and put it inside you with words yeah Yeah. or anything yeah Yeah. and and if it's true i mean you can see when things are true and i think you can like if it was to give any advice to any writers or creators it was like like write about what you know you know like that it's such a cliche that people say this but it's so true i mean if you write about what you know then people connect to your truth. They connect to your truth, and yes. and if you don't write about it, then like then they can see through it. And I think like when I like to go back to what the beginning of the like the origin story, the beginning of the podcast, when I was saying that I was in those bands, like I was just writing pony. It wasn't. I was afraid of exposing myself, afraid of of uh, being vulnerable, afraid of writing about what I wanted to write about. Um, and so people could, could I, I could see through it. The people that we would perform to, like our friends and stuff like that, they weren't connecting with it. You know, even though I was enjoying the process, I still wasn't, I still wasn't ready enough to go deep enough into myself to, 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 to connect with the actual artist that, that, was, that was there, mm. you know. And it, it's a very important thing, you know. Like, um, like with the panic attack video, like a, a friend of mine recently said that... Uh, he he showed it to his his mother and he, he was he, he was you know his mother was was having panic attacks but she wouldn't admit them, and he he then showed her the the, the video and was like is this what it feels like, and she was like yeah that that's actually that's it but you know what you were saying like with the older generation yeah. don't have the the experience of of speaking around mental health you know of of yes. of seeing that it it is you know if you break your arm you put it in a cast but if you're struggling with mm. with anxiety or, or depression like ah just get on yes. with it you know what i mean that was the way ah you're gradual what have you to be sad about you know um exactly yeah yeah, yeah and i it's such a strange idea um or not strange but like i'm trying to just as i'm always <laughs> it's like i just think of the stuff as you're speaking but sweeping stuff under the carpet it's like okay it's an irish thing maybe that was a good strategy yeah it's an irish thing because 
perhaps you know the strategy it was better like when we were really when people had fuck all like just like to, to, to dwell on the, the despair of sadness that you know not having toilets or electricity they didn't even know how good like we have it we just have it so fucking good that we've no we've no idea of how hard it was but and every it's just, every they, generation would maybe, say that you yeah. know like every generation yes. well maybe maybe not the next generation because things are, are you know for the first time going down but it, like over the over the, the the course of it like it's like we have have had it better than the previous generation um but i think if you if you look mm. at like at the history of ireland like we have a history of, of not just sweeping emotions under the carpet but, uh, but but of sweeping everything under the carpet you know the the mm. the priest in the local parish that people don't talk about because they're, they're, they're oh, you know they're up there in society so we're not allowed to talk about that you know or um yes. you know there's like we have a history of, of like um, issues with drinking it in the in the, the country, but people don't really talk about it because ah, you know, yes. or or you know, it's like instead of saying that somebody um, has issues with with their mental health, it's like oh, they suffer with their nerves. That's that's it. They just suffer with their nerves, and yeah, that's a way yeah. of, of of what used to be just putting putting the language on it. So we don't talk about that because that's their issue, you know. Yeah, we just don't talk yeah. about it. It's weird, and like yeah, so it's not just that. Um, it was it, it. It's not just a mechanism for dealing with reality, let's say, at one level, but it's also like you were alluding to there, like not not rustling the feathers of authority no. figures in but a way. Like, in one respect, the history of our country is through secrecy. You know, like we had to have um, hedge schools up mountains. We had to hide our religion. We had to hide our education. We had to hide so much because of of you know a country being like like mm. full of 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 uh you know british occupation and it was like british occupation yes. then that that went to occupation by the by the, the church so we've had to hide so much we have to hide our sexuality hide the fact that we even enjoy sex wow. so we're hiding hiding yeah. stuff constantly throughout generations upon generations like like first playboy came into the country in the fucking 90s you know what i mean like condoms were illegal before the 90s like that's crazy and how far we've come yes. for it so everything has been hidden for us so oh, so yes. we, we've we've just a history of hiding stuff and a history of not talking about stuff so then when, when it when it, we're getting to a stage now when people are like okay like this generation is now ready to start like discussing these these subjects mm. it's it's very hard then to expect previous generations to be at the same level of readiness oh yeah that, that we that that we are and or that, or that we're getting to you know um because yes. it's it's been but it's hard exactly it's it's when you um it's hard for like if you expect let's say for example um a certain certain let's say let's say on immigration or, or uh, let's just say that it's like oh well why why are people why do people even care if people are coming into the country or whatever like some people might actually just genuinely their personality type for whatever reason they're scared of the unknown yeah, absolutely. and they might they might rationalize a particular reason but they're just actually fundamentally they want they want everything to stay the same or whatever and it's hard to like to say like it's hard to say like may, some and some people older generations they're less likely to change because it's like you get more sort of conservative as yeah. you get older because you're just like all right like even with drugs and stuff now i like if i was younger I, when i was discovering psychedelics i was like yay psychedelics and now i'm just like oh actually i'm i'm enjoying just having like my consciousness like pretty i don't want to fuck with it too much you know what i mean <laughs> Oh no, Jeff! Oh no. Jeff is gone. Will he be back? Will he be back? Are we back? Sorry, I don't know what happened there. Can you hear me? Jeff! Yeah, Basil. Uh. 
So. Can you hear me? Jeff! Uh, can, you yeah, right? I can see you. Can you see me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the crap? Is everything all right? Yeah, I don't know what ha happened. I just cut out there when you were talking about... Uh, your... uh, it was going so well. It was going well. so well. No. Yeah, we're, we're at the start again. No, lesson. But yeah, just on um, just conservative mindset, let's say. Yeah. I'm just... As you get older, it's like... Even now... Like, cause let's say when you're very young, you're jumping off walls. You're like, yeah, going crazy. Now, if I'm like, if I, I don't want, if I jump off a wall, it could be over. Like that might, that might permanently <laughs> damage me. For I don't, I'm just, I just want to keep things the same. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because get me the ladder. So, so it's just, a, there's a natural kind of tendency. So, like the, like when young people, they, they're just so open to change. Let's say on one end, because it's like, why not? Change is good. But like as you get older, it's like ah, change, you know. And like it's, I'm just happy to be alive. Like I think there's also a, a, a stage at the moment where we seem to be importing like British and American culture, you know. So it's like yes. they have a culture war, and then therefore it, it's given us an excuse. And if you look at, at like in Britain and, and in the US, like their their governments are so polarized that they they are like okay brexit was a disgrace our nhs is in bits we've got a huge housing crisis we've got a food crisis our energy costs are going through the roof mm. so how do we how do we not get the population to focus on that all right we could do that by let's focus on immigration you know the immigrants those people this has been done for like centuries it's it's yes. not we're not the problem here. Like we're we're a great government, but your problem we would be much better if we if those people were coming in on boats, and yes. and like and and the same is done in like in America. Do you know what I mean? It's oh yeah no no look okay our our debt ceiling is going up. We don't just you know we don't just owe a trillion dollars. Now we owe owe three point something trillion dollars, and you know the the issue isn't mm -hmm. the fact that we've given massive t uh, tax breaks to the uber wealthy and, and yes. you can get a huge tax break by buying a massive yacht that's not the issue the issue is the the, the people that are jumping the border down, down yes. south, you know and we have too much immigration and the, the mad ironic thing is that like the people that come in from immigration work with jobs that that are lower pay and it bumps up your economy you know like when ireland was about on the cusp of a recession in uh, the early 2000s and then we had a huge influx of of, uh, of Polish people in our economy went got it got a huge boost again because a, a lot of the Polish people came in and were doing the jobs mm. that we had gaps in that we couldn't fill with Irish people and that's that's the reality of it you know what mm. I mean like that like the um like communities come in and they, and they should complement the culture that's already there and like the Irish have been doing this for yes. years we've been emigrating everywhere you know like we've been like yes. we're literally all over the planet and yet that we have the audacity to say that, mm. oh no, but we're, like, we're allowed to go out, but you're just not allowed to come in because that makes it a little bit more difficult for us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like this, the, like on the, we're, we're getting a little sidetracked to immigration, but it's fine. The, uh, but I think from my personal own experience, um, like the, let's say the factory jobs, like any hard jobs that I've ever worked, um, working with uh, any Eastern Europeans, they've, all, they've, they've always just, I've always just had a great, like I love, I've always had positive experiences yeah, uh, uh, working with anyone uh, like who's come from somewhere else, um, and I've always just—I've always just—they've always just been hard working, and but like that's anecdotal in a way. But just I just want to get back to the sort of meta level point because you touched on something really good. Was um, th so that generate so if you if I blame let's say if I say oh it's a immigration, then people that are conservative they're just like they want that answer because and then. They love that answer because it, it aligns with it, like their personality type of keeping things the same, and then it's creating the like the like the worst the worst thing, and like this is the worst um, the worst atrocities have come out of this is when we look at another human and we think of them as other yeah. and we think of them as on the other team, or because we have that our our capacity for ordering people exists mainly because well. 
it, it helps it would have helped us like as we were evolving uh, like for my genes to procreate it's better that i eat food and you're not around to take my food so i'm gonna kill you yeah. because you're you're on the other team you're not on my you're not in my family you're not in my gene pool so you can see why it exists but if you if you exacerbate that by with blame and it just it's going to bring we don't learn we don't learn from history as well that the, that the fact of treating people like other that's going to create the worst atrocities like known to to our history yeah and and like they um I, I, there's a for, i was listening to the first person that that um complained about the mainstream media was joseph goebbels you know like yeah mm. uh, now like the like the if people are, are saying we're making the exact same mistakes now and people are going oh you know there's this uh, alternative truths and that you know i think the worst thing that's happening in my mm-hmm. generation is the media getting taken over by by uh private investors you know the the rupert murdochs mm-hmm. and all that that actually have control over the over the narrative of the media whereas and then you can see like at the moment in in uh in britain where their government are complaining about uh, the BBC and saying that the funding should be cut to the BBC um, as a public broadcaster because it's questioning some of the stuff that that's happening there. I mean, that's so dangerous, you know, that we should have an unbiased public media. Like, it's never going to be complete, a hundred percent unbiased, but at least, you know, you look look at RTE. I mean, people give out about RTE a lot, and you know, I, I think that there's some of it is is right, but they still have amazing shows like Prime Time, and our news is still really good and really objective, mm. um, and and that's very important. And you know, you know, when our when our ministers are, go on, whether it's you know the radio for, to be interviewed on RTE or 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 in the newsrooms and stuff like that, the, the, the presenters go at them, you know, like they really go at them and they yes. hold them to account. And that's that's really important. Whereas, like in a, in other countries, now you can see that that the the media is being used as a as a platform for you know like Fox News as a platform for Trump for so long, and like they have that that new GB news in in, um, in, yeah. in Britain that's just there just to, uh, to 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 make sure that that you know no well, Brexit is great and immigration is bad and this is what we this is the, that that we're mm. doing so yeah. I, I'm sorry. I... But it's all it's all depends on it's it's like whatever, like so, where our biases determine how we view everything. And we, if I showed you ten news organizations, and I showed the same list to other people, we'd have different versions of oh who's biased and who's not, depending on our own sort of leanings in a way and our own sort of uh, preconceived notions about like how the world should be or whatever and it's hard for us to um it's hard for us to like see the other side when when our biases can be so um like we're so blinded in a kind of weird way because we 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 look for like for, for example if i i want to eat uh kfc so instead of googling what's what are the negatives of kfc i was like what how, what's good about yeah. kfc so within my search there's an implicit bias to want i want the result that i want You're i want to find. see it out in the world yeah. exactly and with every um gb news fox news like it's all and like rte like people will have every fucking opinion on every single like they'll have like you said rte agree GB are bad. Someone will say GB are great or T. Yeah, yeah. Like I can't believe. Like you know. So it's Absolutely. all just. It's all just like we have to somehow zoom out, and like how do we create? Like you're saying an object. Like I. So with AI, right? This is why I wanted. Like this is what you trigger to me because with AI, um, there's already some. They did a video. It was it wasn't even a great video, but they created it with AI that they the something hit the Pentagon the other day. And loads of big news organizations ended up sharing. No way. With AI, right? Every no, but you, we have no idea. Like people, eventually, you'll be able to just recreate this video from AI, just like from a simple audio and video snippet. We have no comprehension of what's around the corner in terms of uh, the ability for people to show to spread disinformation yeah. or or information of any kind in a particular lens. So more than ever we need somewhere where there's 
like as 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 someone who's super objective, like beyond objective, like where it's like these are the facts of what happened in this a way. Is, this has been something without opinion that, uh, that humanity has searched for for like for thousands and thousands of years. I mean, what is truth? You know, like if you go back to Plato yes. and, and he was talking about the allegory of the cave and and you know that there's mm. people in a cave looking at shadows on a wall and, and that's their truth and and then you know taking them out and, and seeing the, the the shadows leading out the cave and then eventually going out and seeing the reflection in the water and eventually seeing the sun overhead and and searching for like what yes. what is real and, and what's not and like the whole ai thing is mad i, I heard recently one of the private schools in ireland got or generated their principal's voice through ai and, and made an announcement over the school tannoy like bonkers it's like Oh my god! And then yeah, yeah, there was that band that um, created vocals for uh, I think it's called AIsis. So it's like they did Oasis. Oh yeah, Oasis. Oasis. Through it. Yeah, and it like sounded, it sounded pretty good. Um, and so like it, there's this whole new, new new place. But this is you know I I think as we progress as a species, so we're getting we're getting really deep here. Uh, but like as we as we yes. progress as a species, I I think we can always be naive enough to think that you know where we are and and the 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 advances that we're making have never been made before do you know because like when the when the printing mm. press came out i'm sure people were having the same uh the, the yes. same kind of conversations like, this is the, the most dangerous thing ever and this could gonna you know spread disinformation everywhere and yes there's definitely going to be a part of that but it's also you're going to you know it could be a um a tool of of, of finding truth and, and that would really support humanity too so it's a, mm. it's about just really I, I think more than ever we need to be you know helping educate people around critical thinking and and questioning sources again mm. of like who's who who's yes. created this and, and what is the reason that they're creating it you know that like the basic things that you learn should be should be learning in in, in kind of schools and in colleges uh that that's like not taking every because it was like it was almost like we were we were spoiled for um for media for a long time with with you know um you know if it was a, like a tabloid or, or a, a broadsheet the broadsheet was generally have like something that that would be more towards that they, they would yeah. have gone and, and check the source and stuff like that that's not the case anymore and then you have social media and like every, people taking social media as fact and you're like well this is like where where's yeah. the so- source came from and I, I remember over covid having like seeing somebody online like just spouting a load of of um, information about something and I was questioning about, about yes. where he got his source from on this and he he directed me to this website and it was a website where people could put up their, their research projects without them being peer reviewed so I could write a research mm-hmm. project on anything I wanted and then not have other like experts in the field question whether or not what I've written is is true mm. and then because i didn't want to do that i throwed up on this website and then people were pulling them down taking these like academic papers or so-called academic papers and using yes. it as fact so it's becoming more and more difficult to, to try and find that that truth that we've you know we have always yes. tried, to, tried to and it comes down yes it's 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 because the covid one was such a great example of um to assume like of uh, people just want they like I think so a good way I heard the COVID uh, described is that some people were afraid of the virus some people were afraid of uh, the vaccine but like let's just say fundamentally there was a fear of of some external uh, infection let's say and some people weighed it up differently so then they rationalized they looked for the information in like your that maybe that person was looking for stuff that said oh the vaccine's terrible or the covid it's te- like it's terrible so we need to take these actions but there's something our bias towards information and a blinds when you get on that side when you're on the side whatever side it is you're it, you've already lost because you can't like even if i get in an argument with my brother about something stupid once i get on a side yeah. And he says something correct, and I'm wrong. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I'm not admitting it. Like, I, you know I, what I mean? Like I'm just sticking by. I it. think. I think that like one of the thing is that the world has become so polarized that there's no room for conversation. That you have to be right. You know, like you have to be right. So then, so then, mm. like 
it kind of, you know, I'm liberal, so I have to be ultra liberal, and I'll be as liberal, or I'm conservative, and I'm like the most conservative yeah. person it is. And then there's like, like, whereas, like, for a long time, it, the world didn't work like that. You had friends who were liberal and friends who was conservative, and you, you had conversations that were, yeah. um, that were difficult and that you'd learn from. And like, I've not, the people who've listened to any of my poetry or like that know that, that I'm liberal and that, that I believe in equality. Um, but I would never be as obtuse enough to say that, that I'm, I'm 100% correct in what I'm saying. You know, this is just my opinion mm. and opinions should be able to be yeah. changed over time. And uh, mm. if somebody comes up and shows me something in, in a different light, then I'll say, well, you know, you know I, I, I was wrong in that point of view. And that's, that's important to, to yeah. do. Um, because other, other, otherwise it's, it's just people screaming all the time, you know, and, and nothing is learned. Yes. And it's like, like, but how do we like? It's all about like facilitating the best possible outcome. I think is to get like like two so, like because uh, uh, there's always m- multiple ways to look at something. Yeah. So having like the the reason right and left exist is like because there's there's like a fundamental sort of personality difference, let's say. And they're co- they're looking at the world in two different ways, but together, there's the possibility that that we can create a, a way forward that is that gets as much good and uh, as least bad from from both uh, ways of kind of uh, looking at the world. But even it comes back to because uh, Jordan Peterson talked about this with uh, you might actually like have an insight into this because uh, you you're married. So as a as like. Let's say you're raised. Let well, I don't know if you're a parent or not, but let's no. say, for example, when if you have kids, right, and you're if you're you might have a crazy idea of how to of how you should raise your kid, right, and then that your your partner will also have ideas, right, but the two of you might like you might say one thing to your partner and they might say no no no, and then you might say they, vice versa, but the things that you agree on, there's less likelihood of that being super crazy it might actually be yeah. a good idea if you are converging Absolutely, so there's more yeah. chance of converging on good ideas if you're open to that collaboration yeah and I, like i think this goes back to something that we said a bit earlier on as well about, about like collaborations being like an equal level of discussion that you know that it's um that you have to you know give a little and, and get a little for it to, to work um and that's like in any like in any good relationship you you need to kind of have that you know, collaboration and open discussion and open communication and that could be brought across whether it's a, like a marriage or or you know friendship or yes. or, or bigger you know relationships throughout the, throughout the world um so yeah like it's mm. anything where there's kind of conflicting ideas i suppose yeah like and like you don't always have to be a hundred percent right, or maybe if you if you really do feel that you're you're a hundred percent right, like to to get the to, to for something to happen, you need to be able to like let go of that control and 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 give, you know, mm. uh, that little bit. Yes, yes. Sometimes, like it's comp- like everything. Like you probably understand this as a married man, but compromise. compromise. Yeah, <laughs> like you yeah, need yeah, compromise. Yeah. Like that, it's a huge thing in life, you know, to be able to. Um, to be able to compromise because otherwise nothing gets done you know like look at like it, it, in, oh, a million percent uh, in america at the moment with the debt ceiling that's over there oh, like i'm going off a mad political tangent but like the, yeah yeah the, yeah the republicans are saying that they don't want the debt ceiling to go up and they're controlling then joe biden to help try and, and force uh, him into a failed presidency so they can get their own Republican candidate in the next time. But at the same time, there could be a, like a, a massive depression if they if they can't spend money and, and America defaults on its loans. Yes. Um, whereas like the compromise there would would make things easier. And that, that would mean that, the, that the, the left get everything they want or the right get everything they want, but, but it's actually looking for what's best for the people of those communities. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, a million percent. Um, but we'll bring, we're gonna we're gonna steer this great little ship down to the poetry yeah. uh, poetry <laughs> island once gone, again. Gone on mad times uh, there, dude. You know, you know, it, it, this is what I, I love it. You're brilliant. Um, like you're the perfect guest. But uh, just on like, it, I'll tie it into collaboration a little bit because you're sort of uh, your brother in arms. Let's say Emmett O'Brien. Yeah. 
who um, you've kind of you alluded to a bit of your uh, like your partnership or hold on my cat is just meowing like a motherfucker <laughs> hopefully you can't hear it but uh, the so because I seen because um, he alluded uh, on on the podcast I did with him to to your friendship and and just like just because uh, I've been on this journey together and then I seen uh, a performance you did of this um, it, it it felt like a, it was a poem. It was sort of like if it, it, it was like a love letter to somebody. Yeah. It felt like, and straight away I just thought, this is probably for Emma. Yeah. Like yeah. the way this is, this is just like if it seems like it's everything that they are. Yeah, it was a, uh, yeah, it was it was um, it was a love letter really, or it is a, lo- a love letter. Um, I suppose like like moving down to Kildare, uh, which. Like it's something that we've just had to do while we're saving for a house, you know, because rents are extortionate, and like we couldn't, we just mm. couldn't, we, we we couldn't live with just us in a place. We would have had to get a two bedroom place, and then get a stranger in again, and we'd live with strangers kind of yeah. for years, and and it, it was just getting harder. So we like, I oh, would we'll, we'll take the jump down to yeah. there and save and try and get our own place. Um, so there, but but that like I really miss Emmy, you know what I mean? Because we we like we lived in each other's pocket like for for mm. years like when well actually when we had the spare room in my in the house that me and Rachel had rented um Emma was like oh I'll move in and I, I was saying Emma you can't because like I can't have two fully <laughs> formed relationships with people under the same house you know yeah. I mean? like, <laughs> like, it's like so it's, much like, like I have to give Rachel my attention you know what I mean I, I love giving Rachel I love my wife so much but like I can't then have that relationship and then, and then you've only so much yourself to give yeah as well. yeah yeah and, uh, and she, she like she takes the piss out of me and Emma because of the relationship we have like because we are so so yes. close you know, uh, loads of people have have described us as a married couple in the way we kind of bicker yes. and go about it and uh, and work together and um, and he's brilliant, you know. But but like he's he's like I I think together we're like we're incredibly close as friends, you know. Like we're we're, we're like best friends and and then but we're also like each other's nemesis. Are we wear each other's nemesis as we were coming up through it? Like the person that like. Mm. Emmett would write a, an absolute banger, and then I'd be like, "Okay, I have to, I have to top that one." And then I'd write something and, and bring it, to, and then yes. he'd be like, "Holy shit, man, that's fucking brilliant!" And then he'd come back next week with something better again, and it was we were constantly brilliant. just challenging each other. Um, and like you know, when when he'd write something and it was brilliant, I loved that. I get so much joy out of um, because he's so talented. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm, mm. I'm genuinely so proud of, of everything that he's achieved. Um, so it wasn't like an unhealthy, you know, competition between us. It was a very, very healthy um, competition, but and we we, we yes. pushed each other on to kind of to levels I don't think we would have gotten to without the other person. Um, mm. That uh, we, you know, we were talking about maybe get getting a bit comfortable in, in in where you are as an artist. Well, like with, with Emmett, like but the two of us, like we just don't let each other get comfortable, and and like. We, yeah. we got, like we got our, our I think it was our second festival we were booked for was Body and Soul, and uh, I was like, right, I'm bringing I'm bringing all of my best stuff down to Body and Soul. I'm gonna have a fucking set of all my best ones, and then it's like, now nah, we're gonna write something completely yes. new for it. I was like, what are you talking about, man? It's only like four months out. He's like, now we're gonna do a whole new set for it, and we're gonna do it. So, like, we had this this idea of um, of having a spoken word partnership, like a. Uh, an old hip hop duo that that one would jump over the other and, and it would kind of go back and forth, like uh, like Run the Jewels or the Beastie Boys, or yeah. one would cut in and one would interject and stuff. But but doing that through spoken words, so so yeah, we we went off and we, we texted Emma here when we were like, look, dude, we're gonna do our set together on stage uh, just to let you know. And uh, and it wasn't like can we? It was just like yeah. By the way, uh, this is what this is what okay, we're doing with our, yeah. with our set. We're gonna do it as a duo. And he was like, uh, yeah, I just got to check with the organizers. We're like, yeah, cool, but you know, this is just what we're doing. So we uh, we, we spent uh, <laughs> we spent weeks just writing for it and wrote um wrote our festival piece of like these two characters going to a festival for the first time and um and it's like a fifteen month like it's it's like a, a mini play basically um and uh, mm. we wrote that and performed it and uh, went down a treat and you know like it it just like. 
we just could have pushed each other to those st- stages and then, yes. then Emmett ran and fucking stage dived off the poetry stage on top of the, the crowd which was just Fuck oh off. man it was crazy poetry stage dive poetry dive, stage like... dive yeah I was like I can't that's probably the first I ever I don't think there's ever been one in the world well maybe like I, I've never seen it or heard of it but he he stage dived I think I got yeah. him recorded somewhere um, but he got everybody to the front and, wow. and like he's brilliant at doing that you know what I mean whereas, whereas I would be the more the, mm. the, the quieter in the, in the relationship where he's the, he's the you know the, the uh, like he, yes. he's fearless but like it was brilliant and so then like, what, but like being in Kildare for so long you, I kind of I miss those, those daily interactions with him you know and uh, or, or, or meeting up all now we have to plan going for a point whereas, whereas beforehand it was just like yeah uh, I'll see you in 20 minutes I'll be in this pub uh, whereas now it's like oh are you when are you up in Dublin next and, and are you coming um, mm. so then yeah so then I, I just was in, in the car and I was listening to um, a track from from Matman from uh the Mango and Matman duo and uh, his his latest EP and I was really enjoying it and I was like getting loads of ideas of words that were going over the top of it. Um, so I just texted him. I was like, "Can I use this to perform? I have an idea for a piece." He's like, "Yeah, man, work away. Just go, just just go ahead and use it." And and uh, I was driving. I was sun. It was one of the first sunny days of the year, and uh, I was in the car and I just was blaring the track. Uh, and it's an old, really old school, early nineties, uh, like rave track with that deadly breakbeat going through it, and it kind of raising it up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just thought to be, it'd be very nice to to juxtapose that with then this uh, this very kind of um, slowed down um, lyrics uh, that are over the top of it. That kind of find the pockets in between all the, the all the all the madness of the of the of the breakbeat to try and find yeah. those that those pockets to write in between uh so so then the piece then I, I wanted the piece to build up still at the same time even though it was it was kind of juxtaposed to the music that it was calmed down i wanted the piece to rise with the mm. with the uh with the breaks in the track as well um and it was just yeah it was just my way of saying that um yeah i think i think Emmett's deadly and that uh that i miss him yeah yeah it was brilliant because i thought i thought the the kind of 90s uh the, the 90s back to track it just made it feel more nostalgic oh way. right yeah yeah like when i was looking at it, i was like i was just imagine you two just like yup like even when you were doing i don't know my it looks like my camera's frozen is it frozen for uh, you i know yeah your your camera's frozen on my side but should we keep going oh that's great i think it's we'll just keep going it's grand but uh, <laughs> the, uh i can't i can't show you my fucking what i'm doing but joe when you just you did this thing with your arm we were like oh, yeah. <laughs> and it was just like i just thought it was fucking yeah. uh it was just yeah. brilliant like even though i did I, my only no, like knowledge of you is is peripheral and from the outside and just from emma but just that the story of of jeff and emma like it just felt from, from my version of it it felt very fitting in a way thank the whole you. piece thank so. you man yeah yeah like we've done we've done like we've done such crazy things together like like it's it's like we never th- I never thought that I'd, I'd achieve half the stuff that I've achieved you know like I never thought I'd, 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 I'd mm. achieved any of the stuff I've achieved you know like from like I was the Lord Mayor's poet for a while and I wrote the, the 100 year centenary poem for the first all in Ireland you know like that was it yeah, your bio's crazy. Oh yeah, thank you. like it is crazy. Like, and I don't mean to be like, oh, my bio's crazy, but like I'd be looking at it going like, no, but it's great. It's, yeah, it is mental. Like you know, um, I was like, I was on, on a a poem for a documentary that was like top ten in in the uh, in the charts in in the United States and like top five in Canada and England and top, number one in nine nine countries across the. the planet like i never that was that's like not something that you can ever think of like as a realistic goal or you know i just when i started yes. performing first I, I like the goals were pretty much like get gigs and then it was like okay perform as much as you can and then then the goal became like okay let's get paid for this because you know i think artists should be paid and if i'm on stage and there's a load of uh mm. there's a load of musicians getting getting paid and, and the poets aren't i think there's something wrong with that so it was like saying to emma i mean like let's like there was one year in particular we were like let's not do gigs this year unless we're getting paid and we, we, we had it like um a rule of three it was like 
if it's a mate that, that we're really close to and, and wants us to perform, we'll perform. If it's a charity that we believe in, yeah. then, then, you know, the, or if it's for most charities, really, we would have performed for free too. Uh, but, but the, the tour's yeah. rule was that, like, now after that, let's get paid because I think, I, you know, if, if somebody's a website designer and you're like, oh, will you design me a website? And they're like, yeah. Yeah, and you're like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I'm. I've got so many followers on Instagram, so your website's going to get so much exposure. They tell you to fuck off. Whereas, like, if you're, you know, a, yeah. a performer or an artist, and you're like, you've got a, a following, you know, and there's so many. Like, the, I love the scene at the moment. I love so many of the incredible artists that that I see. Um, in the open mic scene that are pushing forward and, and getting gigs as well. And I'm saying to them, like, when people start asking to perform now, use those three little words that are, that are, are the most important words you'll, you'll learn now as an artist. What's your budget? And just leave it at that. Uh, you know? yes. Because people expect, just leave people it expect that. you to do it for free. And it's like, no, I'm working my fucking ass off at this. You know what I mean? This song or this poem yes. took, took a long time to write and a long time to rehearse and a long time to get right. So, like, it doesn't have to be massive, but, I mean, like, I went to a gig one time, and I was the headliner, and I was on the poster as the headliner, and they tried to charge me in, and I was, I was at the door going, oh, I was like, well, well, like, I'm not paying in, and they're like, oh, right, well, well you can't come in, and I, I think, but... What? I no! Swear, I thought it was a mistake. No, I swear, dude, and I was like, I was like, oh. that's my name on the poster. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, it's just that everybody has to pay in here. It's just, a, it's just the way the manager says it. I was like, well, I think there's an issue. Do you want to get the manager out? The manager came out, and I was like, uh, just trying to charge me in. And uh, he's like, oh, yeah, 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 it's just policy. I was like, well, I have a policy, and I'm not performing tonight. <laughs> and they're, they're like, oh, no, 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 look, look, we'll, we'll make it. We'll make uh, We'll let you in this time. We'll make, let you in this time. As if they're doing me a favor. There's a fucking, there was a room of about 70 people that were after paying a tenner each to see me perform. I wasn't getting a penny of it. Holy and they're doing shit. me a favour. So I think there's like a stage as an artist, you know, as we were talking about like, even again in this podcast, with the evolution of the artist, there's a stage where you have to like know your own value. That's the stage. Do like, <laughs> you know what I mean, man? But that's, that's it. That is off. That is absolutely off yeah. the walls. How can the manager come down and look you in the face and say anything other than, I am so fucking yeah, sorry yeah. they're trying to charge yeah. you in. The same thing happened, the same thing happened the following week to uh, Hazel Hogan, another brilliant poet, and um, and she she was expected to get her, like, her travel costs um, at least covered uh, because she was coming in, I think, oh, it was a massive travel cost, but like she went to them, oh yeah, and they were like, oh no, we, we don't travel, we don't cover travel costs, and also it's a tenner in, and she was like, what? I'm, but I'm like, I'm on the poster, I'm on the top of the poster, and they're like, no, that's just policy in this place. So she, she was like walking away. That's just yeah, crazy. Dude. And, and look, there's loads of stuff like that, you know what I mean? Like, So I think like, uh, unless you understand your own value, unless you're, you're kind of, I think people know their own value, but, but, you know, when you're starting off, you just want to get gigs, you know, and you just want to be performing and, and trying to make it yes. of yourself. So you can then like maybe, you know, accept stuff that you shouldn't accept. Um, and, and, uh, but like, I, yeah, cause you're getting, you're getting, what are you getting? You're getting experience, exposure. you're getting, <laughs> you're moving on up, like Book exposure. exposure, but, but at the, it, it, yeah, in the, but in the beginning, it makes sense to kind of like, but if you're, so there's on the extreme end, like what you've described there is on the extreme end, being on the fucking poster, the ticket, and being charged in, that is such, it's it it's very degrading. It's very it's very like you are worth nothing yeah. to this uh, performance. Yeah, you have to pay us to perform. Which which, yeah, you ha like you you're this is your privilege. Like you know what I mean. And that's the problem is is that. Our society as a whole, we get everything for fucking free yeah. and we think like people, the art and the art and, and uh, the creative work is, I don't know why it's seen with such low uh, value. Like, and we should, we need to create a society or a culture that actually values I think it, I think it will come around again. I, I think, you know, especially with AI, when, when AI can do so much that, that like, 
that, 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 you know, I mean, I think it's going to take away so many jobs and, and society will change again. But I think people will go back to to th- that, those connections with with, uh, with the person and with the artist and with the creator, uh, and that will become that will become yes. important once more. Um, but like I think of when you're getting when you when you open up Spotify and you've ever saw every song that's ever been written, and you're like I don't know what to, to play here. So like the value of it becomes less because I don't have to. I'm not buying anything off the artists. I'm and they're getting you know. I I think I'm sure you know yourself. You can have like thousands of streams on Spotify, and then you. You're, yeah, your oh, check yeah. comes at the end of the year and it's for like three euro i mean like what yeah, yeah. like it's it's tough but it's like it's that that whole thing of like valuing yourself and, and creating other little little parts and like the, the mad thing about that gig was um the mad ironic thing was that the uh the gig went really well the crowd were like like bl- blowing up and um it, it was fantastic, huge applause, all that. And your, your man comes to me was like, "That was a really, really great gig." Listen, uh, we we want to we want to work with you, and uh, we're going to fund that you write a book, and, and then we, we we'll sell it here. And I was like, "Fuck off!" You know what I mean? Like, like you want to you want to fund my books? <laughs> yeah, you want to fund my books? So I get a tiny percentage of it, but but then you get you get you get everything else. I was like, "This is you, like this is absolutely bonkers." Um, so yeah, no, it's been there's yes. been a, a, there's been a few things like that over the years, though. You know, and and sometimes trying to get payment from places as well. It's like uh, you're, you're invoicing, and it's lucky, lucky. I have a, I have a job, and and, a, and like I'm not, um, I'm not relying on on uh, the, the invoice coming. But yes. some artists do, you know. And then you've got like these 100%. these fucking venues that are like, uh, oh yeah, it's just that we, we we pay at the end of the month. I'm like, yeah, but I I performed last month you know <laughs> like so like why didn't you pay me at the end of last month when i sent in the invoice um, um yes. but yeah uh, but yeah it's it's just terrible our economy it doesn't uh, the value is on uh, production and and like producing like value in the economy whereas like the creative endeavors creative works it's just it's seen as it's not seen it's not given the the gravity that it's I so think much it, t- it deserves yeah. in a way. But it's so much of our tourism is because but of also it. yeah the values. Uh, sorry, yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah, the tourism and the, yeah, it's, this is, that was already little it's hiccup so far. But uh, the, uh, just uh, qu- I'll just quickly get my point in, and then you can talk. <laughs> yeah, it's the Basil Breen boom box, right? It's not the jo- King Joffrey podcast, but uh, so. <laughs> Just on um, your fa- the value for yourself. If you if you had have accepted right that oh I have to pay in I'm the headliner. How 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 does that like your opinion of yourself and how you view yourself is so it's like diminished. Like it's not about it's about just like valuing yourself, your time, and and having respect yeah, for yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think like you know like there's so much tourism in this country that is from people coming to see um, the places of the great writers or the great musicians of this country and that it, that is so much of, it, of our tourism is, is around the artists that are that have been in the past but it's like those artists exist now you know like there's there's, there's great yes. artists in Ireland constantly where, where we've just got this like that's one of our, our the great talents of this country and you can see it so often in so many different ways but then it's like well those artists need to be funded properly and they, they needed to be given space and space to fail and space to create and it can be hard to get those 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 times yes. so like anybody who's tried to be a professional artist in Ireland it is a slog you know it is a slog yes. and and it is like are you going to be able to pay rent? Are you going to have to be, you know, be able to have enough money for 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 food, or are you going to be able to have enough money to be mm. able to create the thing that you want to create as well? You know, like and it's um, yes, uh, like I think the 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 uh, the recent um, artists social welfare. I don't know what the name of it is. The 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 um, Universal Fund for Artists is it something like that 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 there's a trial of a, a few thousand artists in the country? Mm. I think Lou Clerkin um, was saying that that he was on, and it gives it's basically like a bursary for a few years to be able to go off and be an artist and create. And you can see, uh, like people, you, you know, having yeah. that just 
just stability. It's not being like like a multi million dollar artist. It's just a little bit of stability that so that you you're not worrying about yes. the basics in life and you can just concentrate on on what you want to create. Um, yeah, but we you know that's hard. I think so. So so many of us do have a, a full time job and then then art is yes. the is the is the part time part of it. Yeah. Yeah, like that's the that's the bad, and like everything kind of encroaches on the art in a way. Like like rent, every everything basically is just trying to hinder your ability to create. Yeah. And then then people just don't either they die they don't create or they stop. They just eventually just stop, yeah. and then they just give up. Like many times I've heard someone just saying, uh, "I I I'm I'm I gave up for ten years or something, and now I'm back doing it." Because it's just like it, they, it got it got like taken away from them in 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 just because circumstance yeah, in a way life and it's just uh, like the way we need to yeah life life and the economic reality of it all but and especially in Dublin it's it's just hard it's it's a shame but I, as you were saying as as when when digitally created art and work becomes anybody can just create anything with the hit of a button. Um, then it's all going to be about again. We're going to come back the to performance, performance yeah. and the actual the live yeah. aspect because that's the part we like. If I told you like this, this here was created by AI or uh, like or a person. You like the reason I think we value if it's made by a person because we know how hard it it would be for let's say me as the person uh, consuming the art. It would take hours of practice to get to a point where I'd even be able to achieve something that, like that and then it would also take ages to just create the thing itself so there's a knowledge of the time and and uh, human effort like that that when we see something out in the world that somebody does of worth we that's what I think a part of our value system is that we just know the investment of of human time that yeah, went into like, it I think as well, you know, you know what I was saying earlier on about like writing about what you know about and and, and it being true, uh, and people connecting to that truth, and they can see true, and they can see through the stuff that you 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 have no experience with. Like I think that 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 yes. would probably be the same with you know with AI that people will be like, oh, this might sound good, or um, oh my god, I can't think it, it does this, but but are they going to be like like? worried that it's just a machine and that they're connecting to a machine so then they then that goes where they're going to find the real art and the real art then comes from performance going to see somebody mm. live going to see somebody perform yes. um and and that would be that would become that will that you know that might raise the value again of of art globally because you cannot yes. replicate live performance you know and if you go to see a play it's never the same play twice. You're seeing something different every single night. And if yeah. you're seeing, like, I'm sure you you find it too, if you're performing a song that, like, some nights you perform and you're like, Jesus, that, that where did that one come from? You know, like, that that's a, uh, I've, you yeah. know, I, 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 I like that. Like, and, I, and I use my voice differently and slightly like hear it, a bit more of an inclination. And, like, those two performances are the same. So you're, you're getting something truly authentic. Yes. Um, and, and mm. you know, you're... Yeah, if you roll that dice, yeah. like you're always gonna get slight, like slight differentiations, yeah, yeah, alterations. Yeah, yeah, And and you can you can perform and you can re you can, um, you can do it at home as much as you want, and you can rehearse as much as you want. But then when it comes to a live performance and you're feeding off the energy of that crowd, and you're you you get that really genuine connection with your audience, something beautiful happens, and and it it's just an outpouring, um. Of perfection, do you know what I mean? I think that 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 connection is perfection, and and I I think it it is something that you cannot describe. You know, it's just you know it, and you can feel it in your bones, and you you know, sometimes when you perform, you have this like otherworldly, like you're you're outside of yourself, looking at you perform to the audience and feeding this this wave upon wave of energy off the crowd and, and like it, there's nothing like it you know what I mean there's nothing like it because as you, you said earlier on in, in, in it you know you're not supposed to be doing that you know nobody wants to be standing in front of a room full of people having them look at you 
so that's that's really odd. Yeah, yeah that's Initially. really odd. So like, <laughs> yeah. so, but when you get it, like, and you and you and you click, and you're just in that rhythm in that night, and you're like, this is one of the good ones. It's like when you're writing, and you you know you write a couple of lines, and you're like, I know this is going to be a banger. I just know it. I can feel it. The rhythm is there. Yeah. You I just know it. it. Yeah, and I, I don't know how, yeah. but you just like, yeah, this one's going to be a good one. Or sometimes you read it, you you write something, you'd be like, yeah. yeah, like that's one of the ones that goes into the into the just for me folder, you know, because I'm not going to. I call it the needs. Work yeah, folder. yeah. Never get you never get back to <laughs> that folder. Just gets bigger. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, no, uh, I, I I I like how. Um, just were because the AI you, you, something that I wanted to say quickly was uh the re so there's the people will say oh people will be able to create anything with AI and there'll be lots of disinformation but with the disinformation like you alluded to earlier that I never got back to was people will maybe be more uh self or they'll be more critical on the information they consume and they'll be less likely to just believe things and they'll want sources so there's actually potential benefit from the disinformation of AI and the also the other benefit is that people will hopefully gravitate more to actual human performance and that's because yeah, I, I think, think so. there's there's the as an audience member when something is happening live there's just it's it's a different um because I, I i only start going to the open mics let's say and, and and then witnessing as an audience member and just being realizing oh this is just happening every fucking week you can just go out to these and just be here and, and there's stuff going on and it's happening and you don't have to wait till it's like fucking christy moore no. and vicar or like or or life fest or anything it's actually just happening yeah, right now it's like like you could write something and you can perform it that night like but that was what was one of the really beautiful things like when like me and emma were starting off yes. and we'd finish a poem and i'd text him and i'd be like i'm after writing something and he'd be like right i'll see you at whatever night it was circle sessions and we'd just go in and just perform it so the, the poem would go from not existing to being yeah. presented to a room full of 100 people all in the same day like it's amazing you know and and mm. like that there was like even there was a poem that I wrote about um the gentrification of, of Dublin Eight and it was supposed to be P um published in the Irish Times, but they said that it could have been done for slander because I, I called out a, a hotel developer in it that was destroying the uh, part of Dublin Eight and uh, and I was like, Well, I got all the information from your paper, ironically, so like you know, it's true as far as i could see you know from 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 your reporting and they were like yeah but you have to take out his name and, and then i had to take out the name of the place that that he had uh that he was developing and, and then it was just like stripping back and stripping back in the poem mm. so i was like do you know what like after after the name thing my original edit didn't have his name in it so i was like i don't mind changing that but after that they started asking for changes so i was like oh, look I, I i'm not gonna i'm not gonna get published it's fine um, and it was a big career opportunity publishing the Irish Times goes on you have great opportunities after that I didn't mind I was like my poem is, is fucking sacrosanct I was really upset over it you know and uh, I rang Emma and I'm like this is after happening I'm, I'm you know I, I'm just going to go circles tonight and just perform it there and uh, and he was like yeah 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 let's do that and then the performance there was just like this outpouring of of anger and of frustration and of like a big you know fuck you I, I can do it anyway i don't need your paper i they, i can just perform it every single time i want to rooms full of people and i'm still getting the message across and it's like mm. you know yeah i think it was emma Kier who was saying that like that those spaces they're, they're the last dark spaces they're the places where where the truth occurs because you're you're now you're not um you're not edited and it's not it's not controlled that it's the artist just performing what they want in the way that they want uh to to audiences and and that's a very very rare mm. thing you know um and it's a beautiful thing yes just for the sake yeah, of doing like, it in a way you're not getting paid like no, nobody's nobody in those rooms are even contemplating getting paid at that stage it's just it's yes. like it's the the There's, young artists, yeah. It's the, do it. like young artists that are, yes. that are that are are figuring their way out, are figuring can this be a thing for them, are, are trying stuff out. Yes. And like what I love in open mics is that there's such a wide variety of performers. You could see like 
somebody do do a poem for the first time and they might never get up on stage again but they've done their poem and this is this is this huge big event for them and it is a huge event you know to, to have write something and to perform it it's a huge event and they perform it and then they go and you might never you might not see them again uh, or you could see like a, a, a band uh, who are just starting off and they play a song and it was like like student at the moment do you know what I mean um Oh, like the Jesus, first time I yes. saw him, um, like that was I was like standing up, you know, like like who the hell is this dude, do you know? And like such an original, an original sound, um, and just like yeah, and the, and the new single, Glass Hands, like just like like what a what a yes. what a debut single, just like banging, you know, what a like debut. so yeah. honest, so raw, so. Um, so passionate, so full of the production. Every I haven't, I, I just there's so many layers and levels to how good yeah. that song is. Um, there's the material, there's the hook, there's his delivery, there's the production. It's all the three acts. It's actually so yeah. impressive. Yeah, like yeah, it's just fucking, it's just amazing. But as you're saying there, like when you see that, and you're and and you're just seeing these people coming up and just like getting going. It's yeah. very inspiring, and it's very um, and it and it opens your mind to other possibilities. Yeah. Like with, like seeing him perform, he's very um, he's just he's a very ver like he's like he's it's like hip hop singing in a way. Like, but he he's not not fully singing, but it's like it's like his lyrical. He's he's very much about yeah. the rhythm and, and the bounce of of flow of words. Like he'll connect words in ways that just it's more sound. Like I I I feel like I get it because like I I have a little bit of a similar style like where it's more like the sounds are just flowing together but he's just so and there's so much of it there's so much content it's just like like but then ah uh, anyway but that i don't want to get too into yeah, that no, but yeah it's like it's, it's just brilliant. very inspiring yeah, I, I think this, like for his style i think I, I i see you know a lot of damien dempsey in it as well and and that you know that that mash of, of different uh, genres that really inspire him that's going in but it's it's definitely irish it's definitely it's definitely like yes um, the message is there and there's a vulnerability to him there um but then you can go from like somewhere like that and then you've got the whole the whole spectrum and then like like the first time i seen pm spunk man that 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 dude like, yeah man, uh, i'd never seen that before I, like I did. I did. I didn't know. Like I, I love like PM Spunk. You know, like I, I think it's he's just so original. Um, he works really, really hard on his stuff. You can tell that. You know what I mean? Like he puts an awful lot. He puts the hours in. Yeah. But then some of his stuff is absolutely like side-splittingly hilarious. And there's like we try yeah. and define stuff too much. I think, and it's like he is his own. He's his own entity. You know. Um, uh, mm. Stunt has two T's yes. I have two knees In the middle of a poem Like out of nowhere Like you just don't know what You don't know what his yeah, next line all... is going to be Like you don't know what his next line is going to be Nobody yeah, you, yeah. You, could, you could stay there for, for a day Guessing what he's going to say next And you can't And there's something very unique about that You know And it's very hard to do yes. in, in, the, in the way that he does it Um and he's a really he's a really really genuine guy as well. But like, um... yes, he actually. Yeah, uh, I told him I was doing a podcast with you. He he had some kind words because I was like, Je he's actually the one that told me it was not Jeff. <laughs> it was yeah. Jeff. And he's like, if you're talking about Je Jeff, like, oh, he's brilliant, man. It's so sound, like, it's a real, real genuine guy. And he's seen it. He's obviously seen yeah, it before yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, Um, but yeah, he had a few kind words to say. But like, just on the, yeah, so just like on the scene itself it does it's a great place to sort of learn mm -hmm. and grow but i was wondering um now i know we didn't talk about this but is there any any poems that you would uh have in the back pocket to to perform on the boom box i didn't i thanks, I, thanks I for giving me a bit of a, a bit of a heads up yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah i know i'm so sorry like i actually i was like i should have said it but like now it's just like like if you're if there's anything like easy like yeah. that's that just to wrap it up in a kind of way yeah. um It'll be great. Uh, yeah, I'll do, I'll do one. It's about uh, it's about growing up in in uh, the inner city. It's called No Take Backs, um, and I haven't done it in a little while, so I'm, I'm hoping that I have it that it's all there. So anyway, um, brilliant. Yeah, uh, thanks so much for today, dude. Anyways, before I perform this, like, thank you so much for having me on. I've really, really 
really appreciate it. Um, and ah uh, oh, man, I've just I you've rekindled my um, I shouldn't be saying, but my love for podcasting again. Um, because I was kind of I think it was dwindling a bit. Um, but you've just you've rekindled that love for conversation cool, and man. interest and. I just really enjoyed having you on, but we'll get back. We'll get back to that after right, the book. Right. Right. No take backs. I come from a Dublin that's old school, with home truths and youths and shiny tracksuits. I come from a place where the best haircut was the step. People got wrecked, and we were just let roam the streets freely. See, my gang was ten deep. We'd spend our days hanging around corners, and when night came upon us, we became night crawlers, getting into trouble or running back to our mothers. Yeah, we were right little gurriers. See, days were simple for us. Getting into trouble and getting out without much of a fuss. If we needed a ball, we docked for a card for sponsorship. Door-to-door chances. Eh, uh, will you sponsor us, miss? Getting just enough money for a cup champion football and a few bag of chips. See, this is the innocence that I miss. I remember the first time one of the lads had a dirty mag. I remember when Big A missed Halloween because he got sick from smoking fags. I remember being 15 and getting served and drinking cans with the lads. And I remember when Git told me. He kicked a needle out of one of the lads old Dean in the flats. But we were happy little chaps. Hair gelled up and eyes under baseball caps. We'd slag off girls because we didn't want them to know that we liked them. Or that we were into them. Or that we'd spend all day dreaming and kissing them and all night pretending that we were with them. But we wouldn't... Uh, all night pretending that we were with them and all day pretending that we weren't looking at them because the lads would take the absolute piss out of us. If we wouldn't say that we wanted to wear the face off them. A nice of fade, I got back to me gaff, spent some time with me down, watch TV for a laugh, because ours was a house that was always full of laughter. Even when my brother died. Even when the banks were at the door, demanding the money, they'd take our house. Me in the corner, quiet and mouth, seeing this strange man shout me out and giving out because the house was in her name, they could fuck right off. Times after that were tight, but my ma was a fight and she fought for all of us. When things were rough, she was there to pick us up. When I had to cover a hole when we run up a cardboard, she said, once it doesn't rain, soon you'll be grand, and that stopped making it awkward. This matriarch of incredible heart is the hero of this story, see, she once told me. They can take anything, son. They can't take your education. These are the words I've lived my life on, so when others were out gurrying, I was in studying. When I didn't get the exact exam results I wanted and started worrying, she was there to comfort me, to encourage me, to keep on going. And every time I got hockeyed out of it by life, I just think me dad and his wife. Now they didn't bring up their kids to feel sorry and to never worry because no matter what they take, if you have your education, you can take it back. And sometimes I think back to those lads in the flats with their hair gelled up and the eyes and their baseball caps and I think, what well, if they listen to someone with those words that I got from my ma? They could still be here. It's dead. They're either dead or they're strung out in smack. Thank you. Woo! Jesus Christ, man. That was like, um, it was such a strange um, em- emotional feeling as I was listening to that because at first I was like, ah, oh, this is like a throwback to the just the good old having a laugh days. And then there was just little moments, you know, when you're speaking about, you know, we slag off the girls because we didn't want them to know, and they're just like little little drops of kind of seriousness, and then obviously kicking the needle out of the guy, and then, and then the lessons of your of the, the real like lessons that stuck with you with your childhood, it was such a like, it was such a turn. Like I feel my stomach kind of like it was it was like a, it reminded me. This is weird, but uh, I remember I'm, I've had a few like uh, not many experiences like this, but on mushrooms where there's like a song and like imagine the exp- it's like it starts off happy and then it's, it can get it gets dark and it starts getting darker and darker and then you kind of have to pull up a bit in a weird way but i felt it was kind of true it was i don't know i'm just expressing how i feel it but uh it was, that was Thanks, really man. good thank you yeah and i appreciate uh appreciate you pulling out that <laughs> yeah. bag because uh i did I should have said. No, no, you're grand. Because um, I, I didn't know what was. It's because the Zoom stuff and like. Yeah. Uh, it's um, grand. Like I, I always kind of have like, a couple of. I just didn't know how this was going to go. Just perform, like I'm, I'm um, feeling. Um, I'm just really happy be, that. Uh, the, like I, I actually think this worked out well with the streaming. So, 
I just had lots have. of preconceived notions because uh, other ones haven't gone as well or they've been as laggy. But um, but yeah, I think this. I actually think this could work if I get people with good internet, good enough internet connections. Just doing it from here. Because then when I turn it off, it's just like ah, I know I could go have something to eat instead of worrying about getting you home. I was grand again. <laughs> I'm, apologies. I know I was supposed to go out today, but it just it didn't work. But uh, it's a pity. But I'm looking forward to actually. I would have been good to meet you as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah like I didn't know you were going to be this cool. Like for my cup of tea, um, but, and you were so. You I didn't were know same. you were going to be nice. It was brilliant that. Uh, well, I did. I actually I know, had no. I know, but, full, you know, no, what I, mean? I had no I'm preconceived joking. notions. Um, but uh, yeah. no, you're just able to. You're just really eloquent and really able to. You just took the. You just took the podcast guest uh, on, but uh, no, I really appreciate uh, appreciate you making the time. Okay. And uh, is there anything uh, you'd want to let let the audience members know? Probably Emmett's still here. If... <laughs> <laughs> Someone's listening. Uh, no, man, I'm just like I've a few things coming up over the over the summer and stuff like that. But I'll throw it up on the social media at the, at the poet Jeff G E O F F. No. Not, not Goffrey, um, not King Goffrey, King Goffrey. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll put up the links yeah, and everything. Uh, so that's just normally what I, what I, I promote stuff. Um, I'm not great at promoting, I kind of just like creating. I think sometimes, um, like now for your algorithm to be up, you have to be posting all the time and you become this, in- I just, I, I can't be dealing with that, man, you know, oh, so. Stuff. Yeah, I do post and yeah. I get some stuff up there. Um, yeah, there's been some gigs around Dublin, some festivals coming up, all that type of stuff. Uh, but yeah, yeah, no, but it's just, just really, really nice to sit down and, and have a chat about art, which you really appreciate it. Yes, after so much time, because yeah, this feels like for it's a while. Been yeah, yeah, for yeah, a while. yeah, for a uh, while. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we absolutely. got there in the end. Um, but yeah, look, we'll, uh, we'll we'll make sure that everyone keeps an eye out for King Jeffrey Thanks, and. Uh, We'll catch you in the next one. Slant. Ah.